Good morning. Welcome to day two of Sound Summit 2020. We are here with numerous participants and manufacturers in the pro audio community. Let's take a look at everybody here. So here's a look at everybody. Everybody wave. So we've got everybody on the line here, and it's, uh, it's quite fun to essentially have a, a virtual NAB show. You know, we've been doing NAB for many years. Sound Device's first NAB was in 1999 a year after we began, and uh, we've been there continuously except for this year. So this is a way to bring a little bit of product talk and excitement to everybody here. We've got numerous pre-recorded videos, and then we've got chats with the uh, manufacturers after the video. So if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the stream and uh, put them in the, in the comment chat. So uh, look forward to it. Our very first presentation is uh, from Sheps. So let's... Uh, Roll the tape, as they say. Hello and greetings from Schöps. I'm Helmut, and I hope that you are doing all right in these strange times. At Schöps, we have continued our production and delivery, although currently with protective, uh, protective measures in place. We hope that our customers, who include countless freelancers and small studios, will find ways to keep working and will emerge from this crisis unharmed as much as possible. Especially during that time, we have seen what wonderful customers we have. Thank you. Well, now I'd like to talk about audio for video conferences and then focus on setups with microphones placed on tabletops, like as you see it here. And then I'd like to introduce our CMC1 miniature amplifier and an irresistible special set that includes it. Well, starting now with uh, the video conferences and table setups. Social distancing has led to a greater number of video conferences and uh, video pres presentations or YouTube videos being, home, uh, being made in home environments. Unfortunately, the sound quality of many such productions falls below the level of studio productions. We all know the sound, that sound quality is very important for clarity and comprehension of information, but now these problems become obvious to everyone watching TV or attending a remote meeting via Skype or Zoom. The microphone is the piece of audio equipment with the greatest influence on sound quality. Built-in microphones in cell phones, tablets or laptops have got better in recent years, uh, but it still makes a big difference if high quality microphones are used or uh, it makes a difference how they are used. So on our website, we have to put together a series of uh, recommendations for these applications. Please take a look there. We roughly distinguish among three categories of applications for video conferences. These are uh, microphones now placed on a table, like here. There's the microphone placement like that of a feature film, where the microphone is kept outside the visual frame. And there's the music recording style of recording, where the microphones are in the picture. Um, starting with the table. These days you can see that in video conferences and uh, also TV interviews, there's much less use of a miniature body microphone, uh, such as a lavalier microphone, because they don't want to mic the person. So we feel it is very important to offer an alternative, professional solu solution like a tabletop microphone, uh, as you see it here. Our customers actually are requesting these Amount, in amounts lately. For microphones on a table, we have just uh, introduced a couple of new solutions, actually. Uh, here we have the so-called T20 table stand. It's a small, tiny table stand where our new amplifier CMC1 fits best. And it's actually the variant of our existing well-known TC table stand, which is dedicated for the CCM microphones. Um, 
For those who need an even more compact setup, we have developed this one-piece combination of a directional microphone plus a table stand, which is called the TIMK. So it's an integrated solution, not modular, and it's uh, plug and play, so it requires almost zero setup time. And last not least, we have these kinds of solutions, so an elegant adjustable angle table stand. In this case, it's the TR table stand. It has a bit of longer rod so that the distance to the speaker is a bit less. And actually, this is the, uh, the microphone where we uh, record right now. It is equipped with an MK41 Super Cardioid capsule. For tabletop use, it is very important that you use a microphone with a high directivity because you need that reach to pick up a clear sound even if the person speaking isn't very close to the microphone. Our microphone capsule MK41 Super Cardioid is the ideal choice. But also the MK4, uh, MK4 Cardioid can be a suitable choice, especially when the person is speaking from off axis or moving a lot while speaking, because you see that you quite soon leave uh, the optimal pickup angle of the 41. So the second category of video conference audio uses an approach like in film and uh, or a video sound with the microphone outside the frame. Schöpf's microphones naturally are a good choice here because we are widely used in professional film and video applications. Uh, the MK41 as here on the boom or the mini CMIT as you see it here are a, a standard choice here. Thirdly, when it's all right for the microphone to be visible, for example, in a music recording podcast, it can be a visible, nice looking and also large microphone. People actually enjoy seeing how the microphones are used. So naturally, I would also recommend microphones like the V4, a uh, vintage looking studio microphone as you see it here. So now I want to uh, talk quickly about the CMC1 amplifier which we introduced uh, in uh, September 2019. Uh, the CMC1 is the little brother of our well-known CMC6 amplifier. And since its introduction, it has quickly become one of our best liked products. It offers ships quality in a very small form factor, but it isn't a compromise in any way. It even offers some new technical advantages. The essential features of that microphone of the CMC1 are its very small size and weight. It's only less than one and a half inches and less than one and a half ounces. Of course, it's completely compatible with all Shops MK capsules and all Colette accessories. It has a high maximum sound pressure level, even 40 dB higher than that of the CMC6. It has a low current consumption, 2 milliamps, which is very useful when it's uh, on a battery powered device as a wireless transmitter. And for that application, it's also very useful that it has a uh, wide range of acceptable phantom powering voltages. You can uh, drive it uh, with any voltage between 12 and 48 volts. And of course it has the modern Schoeps RFI shield which protects it against radio frequency interference. Well, soon after the CMC1 was introduced it became very clear, very clear that it would be a lot more than just a specialty item. We started to get requests for sets, uh, as we do it with our standard amplifier, CMC6. So now we introduce these sets. They are available in mono and in stereo sets. And we have made a third set right now. And that's a particularly nice thing, which I will introduce you now. We call it the Blue Colette set. And uh, I will put it out of this package here. 
It uh, will be available in a limited edition of uh, 100 pieces. It's a small set for indoor film sound production. It comes with this beautifully nice small Pelicase 1015 in blue and it contains a Supercardiot MK41, a Cut60 low cut filter and a CMC1 miniature amplifier. All of these three items come in a wonderful blue finish as our well-known CMIT shotgun. And uh, the set also includes the B5D, our secret weapon for pop protection and also as a wind uh, protection against mild wind. And uh, this wonderful combination is anyway something which we uh, recommend as a standard indoor setup for film sound using a boom. And also uh, many film sound specialists, such as, for example, Oscar award winning uh, sound recorders Simon Hayes recommends this setup. And naturally also it's an excellent microphone for video streaming applications as well. The Blue Colette set will be available right now at a price of $2,070. Well, that's it for the new items from Shops. I'd like to thank Sound Devices very much for inviting, uh, inviting us to this excellent event. And I'm very looking forward to the further discussions. Good luck, take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you all again soon in person. Thank you. Go to Zoom full screen. Hello, we are with uh, Helmut from Shops. How about just give me a moment here to do a quick little audio selection to make sure your audio is in the stream. So we should now be able to hear you in the stream. So uh, Helmut, welcome to Sound Summit 2020. Hi, John. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's a nice pleasure to see so many well-known folks on the chat. It feels like being at NAB or, or at Microforum even, which we had to cancel. So it's nice to see you all, and thanks, John, for hosting that. You're welcome. Uh, there's any questions in the stream that you want to reply to? You'd well, there have been a couple of questions that we already answered. Uh, in the meantime, um, some of the folks um, at home uh, have not seen the CMC1 yet. Um, it was um, presented in September. And I think it has made its uh, debut quite nicely. Um, I think um, we are um, very happy about this product. And what questions else did we have in the talk? The the there was the question about the suspension of the CMC1. We um, developed together with Cinella and uh, together with Rycord two special suspensions for the CMC1. Uh, it gets tricky because the microphone is small and the smaller the microphone, the more complicated it is to uh, suspend it. So uh, we knew that it was mandatory uh, in the very first moment to have a suitable suspension for that. So now there is uh, the suitable Minix CMC1 from Cinella and the suitable InVision layer from uh, Rycord fitting that microphone. Um, as it's so small and so lightweight, you need to take care. Uh, even uh, the addition of the cut in between the capsule and the amplifier uh, makes a difference. So for example, for the uh, Minix, the Cinella Minix, there are two different versions with and without the cut or with and without a uh, more bulky windscreen like the W5D. Any more questions from uh, YouTube? It looks like... Uh... <laughs> Ah, there's a question of a desktop mount with two capsules. Uh, we have had these special versions uh, and there are special versions out there. 
um, which are used in some TV network stations. Um, these have been custom and these can be custom nowadays as well. Uh, as well. Um, uh, usually when there is uh, the need for a redundancy, um, two microphones are used in a modular way or even with customer um, um, uh, uh, built um, uh, setups like we see it on the Oscar or Grammy Awards. That also, that is uh, the usage of a Shep's microphone with a custom application. Excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, it's wonderful to have you with us here at uh, Sound Summit 2020. And uh, be well, and uh, you and your family and everybody and uh, the community in Germany. And uh, we're going to get to Tom. the next video presentation, which is uh, from Bubble Bee. Hi, Caleb at Bubble Bee Industries. I'd like to talk about our Sidekick IFB in-ear monitor, um, which we released uh, just over a year ago. Um, and the Sidekick is a really comfortable, really good sounding and has uh, very small drivers um, IFB in-ear monitor. And uh, what makes it interesting or special is that the whole driver, the transducer, fits inside the ear canal uh, and that renders it pretty much invisible from the outside. Um, so let me show you what it looks like. So that's what she looks like. Uh, it is a stereo one in this box and we have three variations available. It's a stereo, uh, mono left or mono right. Um, and they use the same Kind of construction. So this is the driver. You can see that it's, it's a very small driver. And that's the right side and that's the left side. And you can tell the difference because the left side's got blue writing on it, the right side's got red writing on it. And the difference uh, is because the cable entry point into the transducer uh, allows it to sit comfortably in the ear canal. Um, so yeah, this is the stereo version and then they all terminate in 3.5 millimeter jack. Um, the cable is Kevlar reinforced, um, really, really strong. So that's not gonna break. Um, probably hurt your hands before breaking that. There's actually been a couple of videos trying. Um, and it ends over here in a little coupler that takes the loop over your ear and into your ear canal. Um, there's a couple more special things about this. Because it's high impedance, it needs a decent driver, so a decent headphone out um, that'll work from your, your mixer or from uh, an IFB receiver. Everything from the Shure systems, G3, G4 systems, going up to the uh, Electrosonics, uh, Zaxcom, Wizicom systems as well, um, Sennheiser as well. But when you put, put it in uh, a decent headphone amp, it sounds excellent um, really really good it's tailored to the vocal range so it's ideal for cueing you can listen to music on it but it's not going to sound hi-fi because the low and the high frequencies won't be there uh, as much as you used to we would suggest also just another note on that whatever you plug it into we sometimes we if you want to use it with your phone which seems to be uh, becoming a little more popular in some uses. Um, you sometimes need to use a headphone amp in between. So we use these little amps here. There's a couple of them available. Actually, there's many of them available. And uh, that means you just connect your iPhone or Android phone, just plug it in there. And then your, your, your sidekick will come out of the headphone out. And that gives you a little powered, um, powered headphone amp. Um, which is cool. And what I would suggest is whatever you're plugging it into, whether it be one of these, whether it be a, a wireless uh, IFB receiver, you turn it down, plug in, and then bring it up to level. I mean, that's uh, something that should be standard practice with headphones anyway, um, IEM, IFB, or otherwise. So uh, yeah, let's talk about the ear tips. Um, so it's this little silicone thing at the end of the transducer here. And if I take that off, and you have to pull pretty hard, but it clicks off. 
and then it's a soft silicon and this is very comfortable um, and available in different sizes so you can personalize it for each user um, and this one there's three different variations available this one's an open back one so this allows the ambience of your surroundings to filter through uh, kind of unhindered um, which is really nice if you're wearing it for a longer period of time sometimes if, especially if you have a mono uh, earpiece that's blocking one ear a little bit um, you can start to feel an imbalance or or, or dizzy or nausea um, after a, a period of time um, and then this allows you to kind of keep your uh, sound field open around you your head so that you don't feel that imbalance um, it also means if you're having a conversation with people on your right or left um, you don't feel uncomfortable and you can hear everything they're saying which is cool so that's called the satellite ear tip and then we have the cowbell ear tip which looks like this Oops. and that attenuates your surroundings by about 5 to 6 dB um, and then we've got the Christmas tree which probably uh, steps that up to about 9 or 10 dB of attenuation to your surroundings. Um, an interesting note on that is as you attenuate your surroundings the perception is that the volume inside gets louder so if someone uh, if one of your users using the sidekick is saying well I need something that's a little louder then I would say uh, pop on either the cowbell or the Christmas tree if they need a really loud experience um, and uh, yeah it sounds really good like that so um, how you put it on is you they've got these little holes in the back and that clips onto the driver so I'll pop this on here and you can, I don't know if you can hear it clip, makes a little click and and then it's not coming off going anywhere so uh, that's the cowbell and then you can do the same with the Christmas tree and that's the stereo version that I'm showing you here so let me pop over to what's in the box because that's always interesting um, to see what you get because there are a few accessories and the accessories are also available uh, separately um, so I've got one over here. This is the uh, the mono right version. And you can see the right over there. The left comes to the left there, and the stereo. I think this is a stereo again. There's a stereo in the middle. So um, it comes with a very neat little manual, and the manual's got your kind of best use uh, instructions on how to mount it, care and maintenance, technical specifications, and dimensions. Uh, it's also got a list of all the accessories for it um, and warranty information it comes with a uh, two-year warranty so it's safe for two years oh, I was going to show this to you so there she is that's the mono version and the mono version will shed light on the cable options because you can get either a straight cable like with the stereo or you can get a curly cable with strain relief um, on the mono and you can also get a straight cable for the mono so yeah and this is what this is what comes in the box you get this little bag with uh, one each of the three ear tips plus four of the filter rods um, the sidekick filters and that's these here I'll get onto that in a second in a moment uh, and then it comes with two types of cl clip uh, cl I want to say clip clap clamp that's the hippo cable clamp and we call it the cable clamp because it clamps down and it's got little teeth um, and that's a very uh, strong connection with any fabric under it and if you're uh, worried about damaging the fabric we've got this little clip which also comes with it this is the hornbill clip and that's just your regular clip a bit smaller it doesn't have teeth on it um, and it will damage light, lighter fabrics and stuff like that so um, there's the sidekick and I'll open this up and you can see the see the cable so that's the um, curly cable and then you can also get a straight version and that's the mono right because it's red um, and because it says so on the box <laughs> but um, yeah so uh, let's talk about the filter so this white tip at the end 
of the transducer, that's the filter, and there's a little grid, a metal grid at the back, a little hole in the middle, everything's really, really small. Um, and these filters, which come with it and are also available separately if you want to stock up, they have a little point on the one side and they've got a new filter cap inverted on the other side. If the volume or sound changes, the first thing to do would be to take out the old filter because there's a very high chance that there's some wax or some particles lodged inside that filter bit, the tube bit. Um, pull that out, flip it around 180 degrees and pop in the new filter like that and then it stays. Um, this is a one-use tool because now that old filter is stuck on there, you can't get it off. Um, so that you need to dispose of. And then you have a new filter, likelihood is that's fixed your issue. Um, and then pop the ear tip back on click and voila. Also some people ask about how to fit the clip uh, the, or the clamp depending on which one you want, want to do. The hornbill clip's really easy you just need to and remember it's a really strong cable so don't be afraid of doing this you just need to hold the cable left and right align that little cable holder and slot it in and then it's on a little swivel so you can turn it or it can turn any way it needs to um, take it off it's the same it just pops out and then the hippo cable clamp, cable clamp. I always get that wrong. Um, find the position it needs to be. I would say probably around there. If you're going to do it on the back of the collar, um, fold the cable in double, and that goes. Let's clamp close it. Uh, that goes through that hole, and then over the nose, and then you pull it tight. So through the hole, over the nose, and you pull it tight. And that's what that looks like. And then you have access to the clamp. Um, and that'll clamp it really firmly in place. The cable will slip in this position, but as soon as it's vertically held, it's not going to slip much. So let's talk about fitting it. Um, I know this video is getting on a bit, um, but I think it's important just to cover how to fit it. Um, and I've actually been wearing one the whole time. I've got the stereo one in, and I know my hair needs a cut. I know that. but. Um, even without hair, if I try and hold this up for you. Um, you probably find it, it's quite difficult to see. There's one coming into this ear here and this ear. I've got the cables bunched together at the back, running in a straight line down my back. So I'll take it out so you can see. So there's the driver that pops out like this. Uh, all back in. And the way you would fit it is exactly the reverse of that. Um, so you hold on to the little loop to get it out. But let's uh, put it in. So the cable runs up the back, around the side, and over the back of the ear. And this little loop, this bit here, there fits over the back of the ear. And then that goes into the ear canal. So I'll show you how that looks goes over the back here and then you take the driver feed it into the ear canal and then you should be able to close your ear with your finger unhindered um, and uh, obviously be gentle don't push too hard if, it, if you feel any discomfort don't force it um, and uh, but it's really small and if it's in there comfortably the ear tip holds it in place and the ear loop hangs it over the top of the ear, so it's also held in place. And yeah, you can wear this for many hours um, and it becomes invisible. Uh, you don't feel that it's there either. So uh, actually, last thing, how to clean it. Very important. It's a personal item, so most likely you probably want, if you, if you have a sidekick for yourself, it's yours. Um, if you're talent or uh, if you're out on the road and, and someone's using a sidekick, it'll probably be ideal to give them their sidekick and that's theirs. They take it home, they bring it back to set or back to, um, back to the studio. Uh, it's very small. The grid on the inside is very, very fine. It's designed to uh, keep out uh, sweat and, and earwax. 
So a little bit of uh, rubbing it with a moist, damp cloth with isopropyl alcohol will be fine. That alcohol evaporates anyway, um, and then it's left clean and disinfected. And the cable, of course, you can clean um, with uh, either soap and water uh, or, or the isopropyl wipes as well. That's no problem. And uh, there you go. That's the Sidekick IFB in-ear monitor. Thanks for watching, and you can get more information about this on our website at bubblebeeindustries.com. And also don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for uh, many different uh, tests, demos, and instruction uh, videos, um, anecdotal ones sometimes too, on how to use all our products, including the Sidekick. And that's youtube.com forward slash bubblebeeindustries. Thanks for watching. Great to be here. Any questions, hopefully we can get to them on social media. Hi, I'm Caleb at Bubblebee Industries and we're here at the Sound Summit 2020. In this video, I'd like to quickly take you through our five brand new versions of our LAV concealer, um, which we released last month and we're very excited. Um, so we finally expanded the range for Countryman and we've got the Countryman B3 and the Countryman B6, that little guy uh, available as LAV concealers. And then we've also got the Sennheiser MKE-1, also the little guy, um, and the Sennheiser ME-2, which was used with the G3 system as a standard mic, and then the ME-2-2, which is uh, currently used with the G4, the Sennheiser G4 little wireless systems. And um, yeah, we've got five new. That brings our whole range of lav concealers to 11, which also includes the Sand Can Cause 11, the DPA 4060, 71, and 6060, and the um, Sennheiser MKE2, and the Rode Lavalier as well. So we've now got uh, quite a, a range of different sizes too. Um, previously we had the regular size over there and the tiny size over there. And with the addition of the uh, the new ME2 and ME22, we now have four different distinct sizes. So we've had to create um, four different sets of uh, fabric guards, um, as well as the clips that go with them for those. Um, and those will also be available as spares. So uh, just uh, another note on the regular size, so for the, the BO3, for example, um, we've now got, there you can see, sorry, just to interject the ME22 fabric guard. So that's a lot larger than the regular size fabric guard for the previous versions of the 4060, 4071, COS11, that size. Um, so we've also gone a little step further, and actually I've got it fitted there. We've created a new fabric guard for the regular size concealers, and this will start to be included with all of the concealers, uh, the, the regular size ones, moving forward. And we've dubbed this the Fabric Guard Extreme. And um, some people wanted to be able to mount as much metalwork as possible. Uh, we had a lot of requests for being able to put the clip and a fabric guard in the same entry holes on the back or um, yeah, a clip in the front, fabric guard in the front, fabric guard in the back. Um, so we've come up with a solution of the extreme fabric guard because that allows you to still use the clip in the back or you could if you want, now that they come with both the extreme and the regular fabric guard, you could use uh, one in the back over the cable. Let's just set this up as if we were going to be incredibly extreme and lift all the fabric away. So you can put the original regular fabric guard in the back and then the fabric guard extreme in the front. And the fabric guard extreme is bent back over the body of the lav concealer. So that lifts the fabric away from this central point over the top of the concealer. So that'll prevent um, any of the vibrations transferring through to the rubber. And um, you can then fit this without tape. Uh, it'll work with most of the good double-sided tapes on the market. 
Um, outtake is specially designed so that it fits with the base of the concealer by uh, keeping any of the glue away from the capsule. Uh, some of the mics, like the DPA4060, for example, has a, the grid, which is uh, protrudes a little bit from that gap under there. And the reason there's a gap there as well is to give it its own space in which to function optimally. So um, we don't want any glue uh, coming into contact with the grid because over time that can build up and really, well, just be a hassle. Um, it can also change the frequency response of your mic and all that. So yeah, uh, with the tape you just peel back the backing paper and that's hypoallergenic so that fits to skin. Um, that's how I'm mic'd up at the moment. You can hear me tapping my mic. Um, it's on my chest and that will stay fixed for hours without problems. And uh, generally quite a quiet um, mount if you're moving around and stuff. So yeah, check them out at our website. It's uh, w <laughs> www.pupplepeindustries.com forward slash the lav concealer if you want to get there quickly. And then um, also check out our YouTube channel because we've got lots of demos and uh, uh, tips and tricks of how to use them best um, in different situations. Um, clothes uh, like ties, tie knots, um, bras, uh, dress shirts, t-shirts, uh, blazers, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that is youtube.com forward slash bubblebee industries. And we've got all the uh, content up there for you to indulge in. Um, and yeah, so we're very proud of our lav concealer range. We hope you like it. Um, we find it's still for us uh, uh, a pleasure to use out in the field and, and very quiet way of mounting mics. And we hope that you think the same. Um, we'd love to hear your comments and questions. So please um, get, uh, get active on social media and... Uh, you can contact us via our website as well, um, and we'd love to answer your questions and uh, uh, see, see how we can help make sound sound better. All right, we are joined with Caleb here, and let's uh, make sure we can get his audio in. Now we got your audio in. So, Caleb, hey, welcome. Hey. Excellent. Thanks for having us. We had some yeah, questions so in the stream here for you. Yeah, there were a couple of questions that I did notice. Uh, one was about impedance of the uh, sidekick driver. Um, and that's pretty high because it sits inside the ear channel. Um, so I think on the spec sheet, which you can download from the product page on our website, um, it's sitting at dB resistance of 580 ohms, plus or minus 10%. Um, impedance at 500 Hertz is 740 and one kilohertz is 1030 ohms. So really high impedance. And the other question um, was, do the tips fall off in the ear canal? And the answer would be a very quick no, um, unless you're using a way too big um, an ear tip in way too small an ear channel. They're very difficult to get off. So. Another question is, what part of the world is Bubble Bee located? So headquarters are in Denmark, in Copenhagen. Hi, Rocketry Audio. And uh, yeah, I am I live in Vienna in Austria and I travel around the world um, doing what I can. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say also that uh, we are still functioning. We are still open and shipping all our products. Um, so if anyone has any questions or needs anything, everything's still running as normal. Excellent. Uh, we're going we're gonna to continue with the presentation uh, and we're going to kind of move the schedule forward a little bit. Uh, so our next presentation is from Electrosonic. So we're going to... Uh... Roll the tape on Electrosonics. See you later. Hi, Carl Winkler here from Electrosonics. You may remember me from such product films as introducing the IFB R1B, D squared encryption, and the DCHT digital stereo transmitter. In this video, I'll give you a quick overview of another new product the DSQD AES-3. This four-channel digital half-rack receiver is almost identical to the standard DSQD 
except for one important feature. Instead of the Dante digital outputs, this version has AES-3 digital outputs. On the back of the unit, instead of the two RJ45 jacks, it has two TA3M connectors. This way, you can connect to your favorite digital mixer or recorder via AES. This can save on analog mixer inputs, keep your signal digital, and reduce your cable count. The DSQD AES-3 still has all the amazing features of the original, including 24-bit 48 kHz digital signal path, backwards compatibility with digital hybrid transmitters, three different diversity choices, AES 256-bit CTR mode encryption, and unmatched rack density. For more information, take a look at Electrosonics.com, contact your dealer, or talk to one of our technical representatives. Stay safe out there, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. All right, we've got Carl with us again here on day two. It's nice to see you, Carl. Good to see you, John, and thanks uh, again for organizing all this. Great to see everyone's latest stuff. Um, you know, we're making a, our own shopping list here of all the things we're seeing, some of the cool stuff from Bubblebee, and of course, we're going to hit up Sheps for some, uh, for, for some loaners at the very least. And, uh, you know, we're going to look forward to all the other stuff coming today. So it's wonderful to be here, Sound Summit 2020, uh, day two. And so what we just showed was the uh, DSQD receiver, but a new variant. Uh, that has, instead of the Dante outputs, it's got the AES-3 outputs. We had a lot of requests for that, uh, I think, for people using digital mixers in their bag in some cases and in carts uh, where they want to use the AES inputs. So that's really the only difference. I mean, if you're familiar with the DSQD, you know what it is. It's a half rack receiver with four digital channels, uh, backwards compatible with uh, digital hybrid and also with the Duet series. Uh, so it's extremely versatile, and uh, basically all the specs are the same uh, with the addition of the AES uh, input. So I'm not going to stay on too long here live with this, but uh, I will be watching for any questions or comments in the live stream and uh, typing in my answers. So uh, that's the DSQD uh, AES-3. And uh, what's exciting, of course, is coming up a little bit later, and all this ties together as part of the D-squared digital wireless system. So thanks for watching. And I'll be looking for your questions on the live stream and answering them there. And uh, take it away, John. Excellent. Let's uh, get back to our presentations here. Again, we're going to be accelerating the schedule a little bit here. And uh, our next presentation is going to be from, from Sonasac. So if you look at the soundsummit.org page and you see the schedule, you'll see that uh, some of those times are estimated. We're kind of compressing things a little bit on day two here. Uh, last day of the trade show, you might as well uh, compress it a little bit. So... Uh, let's get to uh, our Sonasax pre presentation. So we're back here in the Sonosax R&D department around us with Jacques Sachs. You've heard about Sonosax when we talked about the M2D2, which is a USB sound card. We've been talking about recorders, but what actually made the reputation of Sonosax at the beginning was analog mixers. We have here Jacques Sachs two analog mixers from Sonosax, uh, this SXST here and ES64 there. Is that SXST actually the first mixer you built? Okay, the ST range is the continuation of the SX of the fam very famous SXS, and we de we developed this uh, range around twenty years ago, and it's still uh, today on the market and is still used in uh, many future film. Uh, the reason is the uh, SXS was too small for lot of productions and customers asked to have more buses and more auxiliary and you had also some more, more features. So this is purely an analog mixer? Okay, the, effectively the mixer itself is completely analog and then we, we can complete this with the AD module first 
and after we have added a recorder inside. So this AD module and the recorder are digital modules. Yeah, exactly. It is. So is it right to say that it offers the best of both worlds? Yes, exact, exactly, exactly. And uh, yes, today a lot of uh, very big movies are made with the SXS uh, ST, like this one. Uh, recently we have uh, the James Bond movies, uh, Harry Potter, uh, Star Wars, and uh, also this year, um, uh, 1917, the winner of the sound oh, uh, Oscar. Sam, Sam Mendes. Sam Mendes movie, yes. Yeah. And the, the sound uh, engineer is Tua Wilson, Wilson is, uh, is always using uh, this uh, configuration. Okay, so 1970s was shot using exactly this mixer, this configuration. E exactly, exactly. And uh, many times I think, uh, can we do it better? And, uh, because now people want to have more, more channels. And uh, it's very tricky, but because it's working so well, uh, okay, we can make, uh, we make, it's a different name, it's the VT series, we make until 32 channels mixer. Are the channels exactly the same exactly, as this one? Exactly, exactly. The buses, are, uh, uh, we have a VCA uh, option and uh, VCA groups and stuff like this, but uh, otherwise the, the main core of the mixer is exactly the same. And yes, uh, today, uh, yes, I'm still thinking what, uh, what we have to do next. I imagine that a customer who would buy such a mixer today would have special requests. Do you answer to this special request? Sure, sure. It's always some uh, special wiring or intercom. Or, yes, we, we, we adapt to the, to the customer. For example, tell us what's the last one you delivered? The last one we deliver, I think it was a VT. And this was, it was a completely different application. It was for, for a jazz club in uh, Basel. Okay. And uh, if I remember, it's 16, 16 channels or 18 channels with some stereo strip and uh, yeah, a different configuration. And maybe sorry. maybe one, one thing uh, uh, I'm wondering, it's uh, uh, it's a bit getting to kind of work, a manner of work in the future film. Some people, and yeah, some of the best people, I will say, they have enough with this configuration. And some complain because they, they don't have enough channels. Then uh, my feeling, it's a bit they fill up tracks. But what is very interesting, the, the most famous one, they they are really mixing on the set. And it's, uh, it's kind of, uh, I think, very difficult uh, job. Yeah, I feel it's much, much more easy to fill up tracks, but I think it's not the same job. And uh, well, the, the most famous, they, they still use an analog mixer. You mean they do their job on set related to during post-production? Yes, yes. They have the script, they follow the script, and the comedian and they, they play really like playing piano. Okay. And this is, uh, yeah, it's not an easy job. The Germans planned this, sir. They've been planning it for months. They want you to attack. Read the letter. Yes, sir. Stand them down. Yes, sir. Go up the stretcher bearers, tend the wounded, hold the line in case they counter. Yes, sir. I had hoped today would be a good day. Hope is a dangerous thing. That's it for now. In the next week, command will send another message to me. 
attack at dawn. There is only one way this war ends. Last man standing. Have someone see to your wounds. Now fuck off, Corporal. Well done, lad. Thank you, sir. Do you know where Lieutenant Blake is, sir? Blake? There were two of us. I was sent here with his brother. Oh. Well, knowing Lieutenant Blake, he would have gone over with his men. He was in the first wave. How could I find him, sir? Try the casualty clearing station behind the line. Otherwise. Thank you, sir. Major Hepburn! Some customers uh, wanted to have something much more compact. And this is very close, actually, very close to the old SXS. Okay. And with this one, something very interesting. It's a lot of uh, Foley suite are using this. And it's, it seems it's a kind of uh, standard for this application. What do they like about this mixer? It's the, the sound. The sound. Yeah, the sound. It seems... Maybe the, the color, too. The, 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 the EQs here is an, an option I think we can remove, we could yeah, remove that. Yes, the, the, this is an option, exact. And if you watch carefully, uh, this equalizer and this one, it's exactly the same. Do you intend to develop a further model after uh -huh. this one, this one, and okay. will there be another okay. one? Okay, what's next? This is a question. <laughs> uh, today uh, I, I will not answer for this question. Uh, I have some... Uh, ideas, but uh, again, uh, it's so, so difficult to go uh, better than this quality. And uh, what, what we can do better, uh, difficult, maybe more channels, but uh, it's a big question. Future will tell. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. All right, we are back with uh, our, let's uh, pin the video here. Let me make sure we can get the audio and the stream here so we can get uh, yes. Fabrice and Jacques. Yes. Hello, hello, here we yes. are. <laughs> Thank you, so I, I had a question. How did you actually get the uh, rights to play that video? Because that is, uh, you know, that's production material and of oftentimes us manufacturers have a tough time getting the rights to play that. Well, we asked, uh, we asked Stuart and yeah. he asked the production and uh, they agreed. So, uh, but uh, we are really grateful to him. Mm. And uh, I think it's a good example of uh, what's possible to do with, uh, with a good mixer and a good sound engineer. And uh, it, it, it's a good, it, it's a really, it's a good uh, footage. It's a nice footage to, to see. And Excellent. it's really the sound of pre-production. It's uh, sorry. Uh, it's really the sound on production. It's n nothing. Uh, it's on set. On, on the set, yes. Right. I mean, you know, that's always the uh, the question of: uh, Do you record ISOs and deliver just ISOs, or do you record a mix? This is a great example of how important and how excellent a production mix can be. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And we had a question during the during the the, the chat. Uh, asking if this uh, this exact mixer SXST could be equipped with Dante, 
Jack? Yes, you yes have... we, are, we are thinking on the making a module for this. But the, the S6ST, even if it's, uh, I think now, uh, more than 15 years development, still on production and still available. Nice. Okay. And we still sell quite, quite a lot. Uh, and um, it's um, a model that we can custom to customers' needs. So uh, we, we can modify it. We can do special versions, special wiring version. And uh, as you saw in that uh, video just, um, just before, uh, it has digital outputs, it has a digital report recorder. So really what needs to be analog is analog, what needs to be digital is digital, and you really have the best of, of both worlds. Okay. Anything else, gents, before we get to the next presentation? Uh, thank you to everybody to be there. All right, thank you. And uh, uh, if, uh, Stuart, uh, if uh, Stuart, you are here, again, thank you very much. Uh, maybe one important thing, it's, it, it, I have a talk, a very nice talk with him, and uh, the point is already, um, is always a good uh, dialogue between the, the director and the sound engineer. They talk of the shooting almost one year before to do it and deciding uh, uh, already a lot of uh, things, how to work on the set, where will be the generator to don't uh, bring problems and everything. And that, this is maybe not so common. All right, well, thank you. Uh, we have a little um, slight change to the schedule. Uh, the schedule that was published was incorrect and uh, KTEC was listed early. Uh, if you refresh your page, you'll see the current schedule, and uh, so please make a note of that. We're also playing presentations with less, uh, less uh, lag time in between, so things are going to be uh, compressed a little bit today, so we're going to just go from presentation to presentation with our uh, conversations in between. Uh, so the next presentation we've got is uh, from Sound Devices here, and this is uh, on the mic to wave utility which takes files from the A10TX transmitter and allows you to conform those. So let's uh, play that out. I won't be giving away any secrets if I said that Mission Impossible films always have at least one big chase sequence and that the leading actor always does his own stunts, which can lead to added complications for us in sound because it means that stunt and chase sequences often become dialogue sequences. The latest Mission Impossible film will be no exception. And I decided that I needed to take a new approach for this film. Rather than concentrate using purely RF to record sound, I would use the recording capability of the A10s. The problem with this is that you end up with lots of multiple files which you may not be able to start and stop, you may not be able to add the necessary metadata information of slate and take. That could lead to lots of complications within editorial because, um, you know, how do they handle all of those files? I needed to be able to deliver to them files that they were used to seeing and that they could handle easily. Uh, this meant that I need to be able to conform all of those files in some way at the end of the day. Uh, ready for um, for editorial. Um, I took this um, problem to uh, Kish at Audio and to Paul Isaacs at Sound Devices. And remarkably, Paul was already thinking about this and was already working on mic to wav conform. The idea is that we use the A10s as personals, as booms, and as plant mics throughout the sequence. We jam them uh, with time code, and we start them up using the app um, when we're not necessarily being able to start and stop them just leave them recording and but what we do do is we record the uh, Scorpio at the same time putting all of the metadata information in of slate and take and starting and stopping with camera at the end of the day we make a sound report in a CSV format which we use to conform all of the separate A10 files 
Having copied all my A10 files onto my laptop, I'm now going to convert them and conform them. So I open up Mic to Wav. As you can see, I use three separate A10s, which is my number four, my number five, and my boom. I'm going to drag all of those files into Mic to Wav. And now I'm going to conform them which means I need to choose what my, my EDL to conform. And that's in my sound reports. So here now I'm going to now do convert. And this will now ask me for my destination folder, which I'm going to put as conformed files. As you'll see, it's a fairly quick process to convert each file. Um, there's going to be 15 files here, though, which is going to be mono files, and not what editors are used to seeing. They're used to seeing a polyfile with all of those separate tracks in. This is something which you may decide to do at the end of the day. I think, for me, I will have an assistant do this throughout the day so that we don't get such a build-up of material to do at the end of the day. And this is just another process, much like the DIT have to do, and I think a, a data wrangler kind of operation that we could do fairly easily, and it wouldn't be too difficult to have a, an assistant to do this. So we can close Mic to Web for the moment, and now I'm going to open up here, and here are my conformed files. So as you can see, I've got 15 separate files here from three separate takes. I have takes one, two, and three uh, of the um, sequences, but of course they are in separate mono files. To make those into a polyfile, I open up Wave Agent, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag um, take one of A, and then take one of B, and take one of C, and I'm going to drag that into Wave Agent. And now select those files, and I'm going to combine them. I select Manual, and I select where I want to put them. I want to go on to tracks 1, 2, and 3. A destination file name, which we know is going to be the slate number, uh, which in this case I called boat test one and it is take o one now I can process and it's done as quickly as that we can now look into the poly files And here is our poly boat test uh, in, a poly for, in a poly format. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is to open up Wave Agent again. And I'm going to drag that poly in to Wave Agent. And I'm now going to add the file names, um, which was, let's call the PAs, um, let's say it was John and Marco and boom. We're now going to save that and we now have those file names, um, the, the track names named. Uh, if we look into um, the playback mixer, we can now just um, we can fade down all of these other tracks which we don't need and perhaps we also um, don't need the boom track for the moment and so we have the two PAs which is John and Marco. We'll open up the transport window and we play that take. Come on camera. We'll do it. Boat test. Good. Um, right. So, 
Um, how many times have you done that? When did you start full second leg? What? Sorry? When did you start second, second leg? Uh, two and a half of here. Two and a half. As you can see, the files all sync perfectly. And um, there we have a polyfile that we can present to editorial. All right, we are with Paul Isaacs. Paul here. Let me uh, make sure we get Paul's video selected into our uh, stream here. So just give me a moment. Uh, all right, so now we got uh, we've got Paul in the live right, stream. So Paul, Paul Isaacs. Paul, um, here. let me. Uh, Paul, we got a little echo is, here. If you could turn is, off your live you me without any YouTube live program. presentation. All right, so now I'm we sorry, got. Paul? Uh, We've got Paul in the live right, stream. So Paul? Paul Isaacs. Paul. Um, <laughs> Paul we got uh, let's. Uh, we're going to we're going to exit out from Paul here. So we had uh, we had Paul in the live stream. Uh, he's got a little audio uh, issue, which is not surprising, given that uh, this is live here and we are uh, are newbies at this. This is not our job. We make the gear. We are very happy to have professionals using our gear in a live context and uh, in production. So. Uh, we will we'll get back to Paul, and uh, actually, we'll probably get back to Paul after we talk about Dante and the sound card. Uh, our next presentation is uh, another presentation from Bubblebee, uh, their last one talking about tape and tools. So let's get to the Bubblebee presentation. Hi, Caleb here from Bubblebee Industries. I'd like to take you over some of our miniature lavalier uh, microphone tools um, and I'll be as quick as possible with each one and we'll get through the whole range and you can ask questions about it later. So uh, yeah, everyone loves a good lav micing box and um, we have a range of tools that um, can help you get better sound for your recordings uh, using various lav micing techniques. So let's take a look at what's in the box. I've got another box there, so let me move this just over there for now. Uh, the first thing I'd like to show you is uh, our range of wind bubbles. Um, that was the first product we created for lav mics. And to do that, I've got our little friend, the DPA4060 over here, and I'll show you how to mount a wind bubble and what it sounds like on and how to take the mic back out. Um, so basically, that's the 4060, it's an omnidirectional mic, and it is susceptible to wind, noise, and overload. Um, so we created the wind bubble to protect these little guys and many other lavalier mics from wind. Um, and they have a hard mesh basket on the inside, which is the, the magic source. It holds a uh, space of dead around the capsule and that allows the capsule to do its job or perform as naturally as possible. Got two little legs on it and those are used to find the hole. They're not meant for erratic pulling. Um, and you take the capsule and pop that into the wind bubble. And at that point normally people push it up to the end of the mesh bubble on the inside. And it's highly recommended that you then just ease it back out about a millimeter, maybe two millimeters. And by doing that, you're then maintaining space, an air gap, a bubble of dead air around the top of the capsule as well, because any fabric pushed against it will transmit vibrations a lot, a lot louder. And uh, that's what it sounds like when it's on as well. So that's the 4060 with the wind bubble on it. And um, we use as good quality materials and the design is designed specifically to allow it um, to be as uh, transparent as possible in terms of frequency. Um, though it, it is always a compromise when you put something around a capsule. If you want more wind protection on this, for example, you could use the size 3 instead, which is furrier. Um, you could use the size 2 or the size 3 on the DPA4060. Um, and there are four sizes. And if you'd like to find out exactly which size fits your lav mic, go onto the website and check out our size guide under info um, for the wind bubbles. And that's uh, 
got a lot of mics and a lot of different sizes on it. Um, so yeah, we've got the four sizes. Uh, there are also six different colors. So that's gray, black, we've got brown ones. That's the size one, incidentally, it's very small. That'll fit your MK1 DPA 6060, um, Countryman B6 and such mics. And that's the size four, that's the biggest one. So that'll fit mics with a diameter of, um, you know, 10, 10, 11 millimeters uh, that works on the, the long AZs and stuff like that, and the clippies. Um, so yeah, depending on what you need, we have a size that fits your mic. I'm gonna show you how to take this out. So to unmount it, you just apply, apply a little bit of pressure on the top just to ease the capsule out. And that twists right out. You don't lose your cap inside or anything like that. Um, sometimes it can take a little bit of a knack um, or maybe some practice, but with practice it gets a lot easier. So yeah, let's talk about the lav concealer. Um, and that's this guy here. And we have 11 different, or well, we cater for 11 different microphones, but uh, I know some people have tried uh, using other microphones in and, and they do tend to work. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to mount the 4060. It's a soft rubber, which means you can bend it like this. And the best way to mount it is put your thumb at the front, two fingers at the back, bend it. That gives you the entry hole here. And then you slot the microphone in until you feel it against your thumb. That's when it's up at the end. Let it spring back and that's the perfect mount. So um, we also have various ways of attaching this to your talent. You can use a clothing clip, um, which it comes with. I've got one here. All right, so the clothing clip fits either into the back, two holes on either side of the cable entry or to the front, depending on how you'd like to mount it. If you're mounting it in a bra, I would suggest putting the cable clip in the front, running it on the inside of the bra and then clipping it to the outside fabric. Um, that's a very good mount. Um, the fabric guard is intended to keep fabric away from the top of the rubber. So this is the fabric guard extreme. It also, the regular size ones also come with the regular fabric guard, which is like that. And then the lab concealer is available in white or black and the corresponding color fabric guard and metalwork will come with that, either chrome or black. So that's the lab concealer and you can hear what it sounds like. Um, I'm going to attach it to my hand with some of our lab concealer tape that comes in a roll of 120. You also get six pieces when you buy the lab concealer. Um, and the tape's cut specifically to the shape of the lab concealer, again, to keep glue away from the capsule and make sure that the capsule sits in free space or as much free space as possible. Fit the tape, take the backing paper off, fit it to either skin or to fabric or to the back bumper of a car if you want to use it amount for that. It sometimes fits on a visor very well um, and that also uh, gives the mic a bit of a shock uh, mount. Uh, being that it's rubber and won't transmit as many of the vibrations. So yeah, you're hearing me talking through the 4060 on my hand now. So yeah, I'll show you how to remove it. You grab the back just under the cable and just peel it away. And then you need to free up one of the corners of the tape like that. And you peel the tape back and that comes off without leaving a residue at all and dispose of the tape. And that's the lab concealer. So if you've got any questions about that, yeah, we'd be happy to ask them. Please contact us uh, or hit us up on social media or yeah, we'll try and catch you live after this. Um, let's see if I can show you how to remove the mic. Yeah, you bend the, bend the concealer back like this again. And yeah, just twist the capsule a little bit as you bend it out. And that removes it without losing any caps, which is a common question we get asked. All right, so I'd like to show you next our range of lav covers, and we've got two in particular, the Invisible Lav Covers Original and the Invisible Lav Covers Fur Outdoor. And these are useful in any situation that you could use them in um, to protect the mic from wind, fabric, rustle, um, uh, friction and also just to give it a nice housing that you can 
handle easier when miking up objects and people. Um, so I'll show you how to do that with the Invisible Lav Covers original. This is one of my favorites that I use to, uh, for example, hide a mic in a cap or a hat, um, as it's very unobtrusive and very transparent sounding. So I've got one here, and you can see it's a, a soft, squidgy mesh fabric that has a very fine weave on one side, and it's got this transparent pore weave on the other side. And that means you can, uh, the fine weave goes on the microphone side, and it comes with, in the box, 30 mounts, that is nine of the invisible lav covers, which are reusable three to four times and 30 of the invisible pieces of invisible lav tape. Um, so I'll show you how to mount that. And you'll notice the tape has a window in it, and that's because we don't like putting any of the tape on the grid of the microphone. And that leaves a glue buildup over time and can actually change the frequency of the microphone. So pop the microphone grid in the middle of that window, like so, on the tape. Step two. I'm not going to name the steps here. Grab your uh, invisible lav cover and put it with the fine fabric side up against the edge of the tape on one side, then bend over the other side and also depress the edge. And the reason to do do it by the edges first is because you don't you don't want to crush the mic in there too much. Try and give it as much space as possible, and then you end up with this little pack it like that, and that protects it from, um, uh, it gives it a nice little packet and protects it from uh, friction and a little bit of wind noise and yeah, gives you a nice way of hiding the mic in the cap. So I would normally take that and pop it just on the inside um, of the headband at the top and that puts the microphone just on the forehead, which is a very nice acoustical place to put a mic on a person. Um, I'll put it on my hand, and you can hear what that sounds like. Uh, me mic'd up with a 4060 on my hand. Not uh, an ideal situation all the time, but uh, works for this video. And uh, you can hear what the material does, you know, frequency-wise. And we'll, it should be very transparent. We'll take this off. Um, and you can see the, the packet there. And then what you do is you take the mesh material from the back, and then that separates the tape out. And then slowly around the edges, remove the mesh material like this. And that's reusable. I've already used that twice, so that's the third time. It's still reusable a fourth. Um, and then you can pull this off the side of the mic, the tape leaves no residue and it hasn't been in contact with the grid, which is really good. Dispose of that. If you need something a little bit more heavy duty, if you're going outdoors and it's going to be windy, if you've got heavier fabrics that you need to protect against, if you have some more space and you want to ensure that no matter what you're going to get the best results, we have um, the lav covers, the invisible lav covers for outdoor. And that is our piece of fur, which I have in my other lav box here. And I've used this extensively. The piece of fur allows you uh, creative freedom. Uh, this piece is cut almost to its end, but it comes in a longer piece, a much longer piece like this. and about two or two and a half times as long as this, and that allows you to cut pieces as as you wish uh, to whatever size you need. And I use that, uh, for example, if you have a stubble uh, guy with a shaved, uh, freshly shaved neck, uh, and uh, maybe, I don't know, the stubble's come out again and he's got a collar on, you can hear a, a, like a scratching noise between the shirt and the, um, the stubble. And if you cut, uh, color matched. This comes in the same six colors as our wind bubbles. Uh, white, off-white, beige, brown, gray, and black. If you cut a color matched piece of the fur for each side of the inside of the collar, um, it's a nice trick that uh, stops the uh, scratchiness. 
uh, coming through as ambient noise. That's the piece of fur, and we've because it can get a little bit uh, ha furry, uh, cutting that on set, uh, maybe under pressure, you want to be able to go to the square that you've got pre-cut, we've pre-cut them for you. So these come with nine in three colors. So those are nine different fur squares, and they have the transparent back material and the multi-pile fur on the front. And I'll show you how to fit that as well. You can hear what it sounds like very quickly, because you've already seen this once. Take some of the invisible lav tape, pop the grid in the middle of the window, attach the edge of the fur cover, push down the rest of the edges. That's what it looks like in the package. That's how you would set it up if you can before, beforehand. Take off the backing paper. That's what it looks like and then fit it to your talent or whatever you'd like to fit it to. Also useful uh, using the fur on the back of, you hear me through this mic now, on the back of um, car bumpers if you want to record exhausts and give it a little bit of uh, wind protection is you can use a microphone inside a lav concealer and this is a really cool way of doing it that stops the vibrations from the car coming up to the mic and then you can put a piece of fur with the invisible lav tape over the top edge to protect the uh, protect the capsule from wind so that would then fit over the top like that um, and that's a really cool way of creating an extremely resilient uh, microphone mount for your lav mic. Um, so I'll take this off again. So again, peel it off from the back, give it a little tug around there, and the tape comes off the cover like this. The cover's reusable. And remove the tape from the mic. And there you go. And that is uh, our range of invisible lav covers. Um, that's the Invisible Lab Covers original and the Fur Outdoor. And uh, I hope you like them. Give them a try at some point because they're really good um, tools to have in your toolbox. And then I'd like to show you uh, last but not least the uh, very cool little device called the Cable Saver. And that's this guy here. And the Cable Saver is really a lifesaver. It's like a shock absorber for your microphone. And you can use it in one of two ways. You can use it down near the transmitter, as I have here. And that protects against the transmitter falling and snapping and damaging the combiner on your transmitter or microphone. So yeah, that's a really good place to put it. And that's what it was designed for initially. And it saves a lot of money over time from uh, rough handling of of transmitters and microphones and you'll save yourself many breakages over time. Um, and the other way you can use it is up near the top of the microphone, so up near the capsule end. And um, in this case, the shock absorption effect actually acts as a vibration absorption effect and stops all cable noise from beneath that point coming to the capsule. Cable noise is a big thing. Uh, this is what it sounds like. That's rubbing it, and if you touch it. And that's generally, I mean, that's the DPA 4060. Um, different microphones, different designs have different levels of cable noise or different types of material, and therefore, yeah, it's always an issue, um, especially if it's uh, under a shirt against um, friction, uh, sorry, thicker fabrics, uh, and, and the talent is also fidgety. That's never a good thing. Um, but basically, yeah, that's what it sounds like. And this is the effect of the cable saver, because everything below that, that's above, that's below. Above, below, and touching. So it really has a big effect on stopping the noise from reaching the, the capsule. Um, so yeah, check that out. That's called the Cable Saver. It looks like that. It comes in a pack of four um, and that's available uh, from any Bubblebee dealer. And yeah, we hope you like it. 
thanks for watching. Um, check out our website at bubblebeeindustries.com. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube forward slash Bubblebee Industries and have a windy day. All right, we're back with uh, Caleb here. Let me just make sure Caleb's audio is showing up and here it is. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. So you had a few questions in the stream. Do you want to get to them? Yeah, so there was a question again on how to mount the uh, the wind bubble, um, and I've just got this ready here so I can show. There are two little tabs, uh, legs we call them. Uh, you can open them and that helps you find the hole. You don't use them to hold on to. I normally just grab a little bit of fur on the edge, take the mic and slot that in to the wind bubble like that. Push it all the way to the end and then retract it about a millimeter and that just gives it space around the capsule. That's what it looks like. Um, yeah, and then uh, Bernie Baudry said the cable saver is nice, but putting it near the capsule will make the cables very visible. Uh, yeah, that is true. Um, not every tool is, is, is perfect for every situation. Um, you can also move it slightly down the capsule. And if you're using a good way of taping a loop onto your, your talent, generally that, that can help as well. Um, so we use them in our situations. I'm using one now under the t-shirt. It works pretty well. And um, yeah, we, in we intend it to be for everything, but yeah, that's, that's how it works. Excellent. Uh, there were uh, some questions for sound devices from the uh, mic to wave presentation. And what we're mm -hmm. gonna do with those is we will get to those after we play this next upcoming presentation, which is uh, Dante on the sound card. Uh, before we jump into that, uh, Caleb, anything else? Um, yeah, it was just uh, what, what point should the cable saver be located at? There's a video on our YouTube channel um, which covers that in full, so they'll be able to see. Excellent. Thanks for having us. Oh, thank you. Uh, now right. let's, uh, you know, Dante is something that has uh, appeared in our world and uh, is, a, is a very powerful tool. And we're seeing this for audio IO and it simplifies cabling and production quite a bit, uh, gives you lots of capabilities. And here's a little video to show a little overview of Dante on the sound card. In this presentation, we're gonna be talking about Dante on the sound card. Dante used in production sound. This is an XLR cable. This is often used to interconnect pieces of gear over analog. Actually, you can use it for AS digital too. Uh, in fact, you can also use this connection for some digital networking protocols as well. But most of the time, this is used in analog. In analog, it's fairly straightforward. You have your source, you have your destination, you interconnect and you're done. That's fine if you've got a few channels, but now when the channel count starts to increase, you're gonna to start to have a lot of these cables. Eight channels, 16 mic preamplifiers on the Scorpio, 64 channels of audio on the 970. This starts to add up. Back in the 90s, in the early 90s, when I was at Sure, we started looking at some of the network protocols and they were kind of early days, not yet ready for prime time. But in around 2006, 2007, 2008, which I believe was the very first Dante product that came out, Dante, which is a protocol from Audinate, an Australian company, came out with a very nice audio over ethernet protocol. So instead of having 64 of these or 128 of these, all you need is a single CAT5 cable, CAT6 cable. So now your interconnection between devices from multiple channels is as simple as interconnecting the physical layer of Ethernet. So I've just made an interconnection between an 888 and a Scorpio. What that allows me to do is send signals between these two devices. For instance, I may want to take an 888 and a Scorpio out in a single environment because I can now have 
16 microphone preamplifiers here, 8 microphone preamplifiers here, and now I have a 24 input setup. And now I can use the Scorpio, because the Scorpio can record all those tracks, as my single recorder to record all of that audio. In addition, I can do other things. I can take the audio out of the Scorpio, and now I can also connect it to my 970, which is not plugged in right now. And now, all the audio tracks from the 888 and the Scorpio can now be recorded onto the 970. So I can use the 970 as a bit bucket, a tool to record those files, and have them in one destination, or now multiple destinations. Alternatively, I can make that connection to a computer. So now a computer, notebook computer running virtual sound card, Dante virtual sound card, can now be on a Dante network. And I can control uh, the routing using the Dante controller application. And I'll set up all my routing using that. But I can use the computer and Dante as a sound card, and I can run a DAW workstation and record all the tracks that are being generated in this environment to my computer. The other benefit of Dante is that you're seeing wireless receivers with Dante. You're seeing wireless rack devices like the A10 rack that has a Dante output. So now I can place my rack close to the set because I can keep my antenna to receiver distance short and I can run a Dante cable back to my cart. So I have all this flexibility. There's other Dante endpoints. There's some very low cost uh, $100 endpoints that allow me to have just an XLR out. So I can send and I can make a connection to Video Village with a single low cost Cat5 connection, run that out there. And now I can send using Dante controller, I can decide what I want to send from that environment there. So I may want to send program. I can also send com. It's a very powerful tool. I can also add big mixing consoles into my environment so that I can use a bigger desk if I needed to for more complex uh, I.O. and routing, in addition to all of my cart-based tools. So Dante is a very powerful system that simplifies the physical layer interconnection and gives you incredible power in terms of signal routing all over standard Ethernet protocol using standard Ethernet topology hardware. Thank you very much. All right, we're here with Paul, and let me get Paul's audio into the stream here. Just give me a moment. Got it, and we'll go uh, side by side here. Uh, so we just had our presentation on uh, Dante on the South Card, and it was a very uh, topical overview basically talking about the, the physical layer of Dante. Uh, you know, these, these are protocols that can go incredibly deep. Uh, but bef before we talk a little bit about Dante and field some of those questions, I know there were a few questions regarding the uh, mic to wave utility, um, even wave agent. Paul, I, I think you've got a few questions to Yeah, the, apply a to. few questions came through and um, please post more if there, I've missed some. Um, one question was, does mic to wave conform work with start time code and end time code metadata. Yes, it works with start time code metadata and it calculates the exact start um, and stop TCs from the duration and then essentially conforms the dot mic uh, file from the audio limited transmitters to exactly the, the uh, duration defined by start time code and end time code. And then also basically embed, embeds that start time code value into the resulting conformed wave file, along with scene and take metadata accordingly. Um, there's another question, a follow up question to that, which says, is this mic to wave only for audio limited? Yes, it is. Um, it um, works on the dot MIC or dot mic files that the um, uh, A10 transmitters create. So it takes those files that are recorded on the micro SD cards inside the transmitter and conforms them. And that process essentially, the conform process effectively 
conforms to the start time code and length, but also converts to the WAV file in the same process. And it's a very fast process. Um, just a, a, a bit of information, the, the um, mic to wave conform feature will work with any CSV sound report that's been created on any um, sound devices tool uh, from the eight series to the six series uh, to um, um, the mix pre as well. So then the only other questions are Dante related, I think there, John. Uh, there, there are some questions. Uh, there is a question reg related to uh, Audio Limited. Um, you know, if there's any brand new hardware from Audio Limited, uh, you know, Sound Devices and Audio Limited have been a family for uh, a little over a year now. And, uh, you know, so we're always looking forward to new products. Uh, we don't have anything to discuss or to uh, present at present, uh, but, you know, always keep in mind that we're always in development of new products. Uh, you know, in terms of, you know, back to the question of the Dante, uh, there's one question, why did Dante succeed over other networked audio protocols? And I touched on this briefly in the video. There are many different audio over Ethernet protocols. And Dante succeeded in many ways because of effective marketing, a good protocol that worked quite well, good tool sets for developers, uh, chip sets for developers. So these are an ecosystem and a universe that uh, is required for this to be used by multiple manufacturers and to you know work across an industry. So uh, Audinate, an Australian company, did a did a good job of getting their protocol out and making that successful. Yeah, I think also um, what really sort of made it uh, take off um, was also using standard off the shelf uh, routers, um, no special hardware required, but maybe more importantly um, was the auto discovery mechanism built within it uh, where you didn't have to really have any specific high level ip or ethernet knowledge to connect devices together on a network um, the uh, it uses a i believe a, a protocol called bonjour to um, identify so that uh, Dante devices on a network can identify uh, who each other is and what capabilities they have. And I think that has gone a long way to making this take off. And, you know, once you get past a certain threshold of manufacturers supporting a particular protocol, um, eventually it sort of um, exponentially increases. I guess it's a bit like that VHS uh, <laughs> Betamax war. <laughs> but, um, well, anyway. you know, and it is important to recognize that Dante is, is, a, is a subset of network, you know, data networking. And, you know, as a production mixer, you know, if you compare a production mixer from the 80s uh, to a production mixer, you know, present in 2020, uh, the skill set continues to evolve. Uh, you know, the skill sets that we added in the 90s and the, in the 2000s were file-based uh, tools. We needed to learn data. We needed to learn how to move data around and files and such. Now, when we're talking about many interconnections and the, simplifying them physically over Dante, there's a certain amount of data knowledge and networking knowledge that's required in order to be successful. So it's another skill set that we add to our arsenal as production mixers. And it's something that, you know, as, as time goes on, our, the core element of placing the right microphone in the right location and capturing that performance always remains, but there's all these other technical tools that add on to it. And, and Dante and networked audio is yet another protocol that you add on top of everything that we need to learn. Mm -hmm. There's a question here, John, that I've just seen come through. It says, is it possible to use SCV file from another device such as Arton? I'm presuming that's CSV file. Um, Arton would basically have to write the format of their CSV file to match the CSV file format that we create in sound devices. And then yes, it would work. That's not a particularly big technical challenge, but I would leave that, uh, I would go, I would speak to Arton on that and um, would be happy to work with them on that to uh, 
make sure their CSV files were compatible. So, yeah. Alex um, had a question about, uh, you know, integrating video and audio to send to Video Village. Uh, that is that is a good question. Um, you know, in our environment, we, uh, we know that Dante or Autonate has added video over their Dante protocol. Uh, I think it's still early days to on those chipsets, so we're just starting to see that. But I think we're going to see this fleshing out over time as, uh, you know, certainly for the back end for sending signals to Video Village. Uh, I know it's still yeah. pretty common to be running, uh, you know, RJ style video cables to, uh, you know, from Video Village to the sound cart. You see that quite often. Uh, we'll, I think we'll see that consolidate over a single Cat5, Cat6 type cable over in the future. And that whole part of the market, video and audio over the same Cat5 cable, has also got multiple different protocols, protocols all competing as well. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that one, whether actually a standard will emerge or a, a most widely used standard. There's, there's NDI, which seems to be being picked up quite widely now, and there's others from Sony, et cetera. Well, one of the things that... that our, our user should note is that, you know, the power that we've added in the 888 and the Scorpio in terms of bus capability is, is tremendous. And you can use those buses and you, with an Dante implementation, you can take advantage of that and you can send mix minus video, you can send com, you know, wet com, dry com, whatever you need to whatever destination over Dante. And, you know, as I had in that video, those simple endpoints, those simple Ethernet endpoints, are, are very nice to be able to send audio, vari variety of different uh, audio sources around the set exactly. as needed. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, as we mentioned in yesterday's presentation, the Scorpio, for instance, has 32 Dante outputs and the 888 has 16. And each of those outputs can have a totally individual matrixed route, uh, which can comprise multiple ISO channels, any one of 12 buses um, and so the flexibility is really there's no limit to how you can route things to different areas on a set right and, and no doubt we're seeing dante with uh, many manufacturers in our market we see it from uh, obviously sound devices we see it electrosonics uh, zaxcom has it aton has it uh, audio limited with our a10 rack uh, so you know we're seeing the a proliferation of these devices because it just simplifies that physical layer and you know it's you know that ethernet connection is just another way to get audio so you still need to have a good signal uh you know the microphone is still the most important sound you know thing in the signal chain but it's everything else that gives you the power to route that signal wherever you need to with yeah. dante if i could sum up dante with one word which i'm gonna take away <laughs> take from cuisine i'd say is Reducing the amount of spaghetti. Yeah, <laughs> that's ex that's exactly what it does. I mean, if uh, you look at anyway, here's a, yeah, go ahead, Paul. <laughs> yeah, here's a question that came up by the way as well, which does sort of relate, I think, more to the eight series. I just want to quickly answer this um, regarding Dante. It says, um, "Can you address? Have we got trim EQ and all same processing functions with Dante input and output?" than other types of input and output. I'm guess referring to mics, mic and line. Yes, basically you have the whole gamut of processing capabilities. So on the, on the first 16 channels, you, um, you can route Dante and you can apply limiters, you can apply digital gain. Um, you've got three band EQ. You can e even run the, your Dante through a 16 channel auto mixer. Um, so yeah, no limitations there at all. The, uh, there was a question in terms of the physical robustness of an RJ. RJs are actually quite robust. Uh, Paul, you were, you were muted there for a second. Uh, no, I'm still Oh, here. you're still there. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, RJs are quite robust. Uh, it's, it is designed for multiple duty cycles, so it is the kind of thing where you can take a 8 Series on and off a cart if you're going to be snipping it into a cart environment and then taking it out of a cart environment. Uh, there's also the ability to go from copper Ethernet to fiber, and then you can run that, uh, that physical connection and that uh, data connection incredibly long runs. So it's, it's a very nice tool 
to operate in much bigger environments. Yeah, John, don't they also um, have, um, there's a Neutrik version of the uh, RJ45. Right, the Ethercon. Correct. Yeah. Ethercon, which, you know, is a, a really robust socket. So at least that handles that side of things. Right. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Well, we've got uh, additional videos. And our next one is, uh, again, we're going to be kind of moving along in the schedule here a little bit. Uh, the next one is going to be the Electro. Uh, so we're, we're a little bit early on this, but this is, a I, I know, something that uh, Carl is pretty excited about. And I, I'm actually going to mute he, Paul. I'm going to mute you here, and uh, we'll get Carl in here. And, uh, Carl, we're going to pin your video. And so if you can uh, give us an introduction of uh, what we're going to see here. Sure thing. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, uh Upcoming is a new transmitter, and I just wanted to acknowledge uh, there's a little bit of tongue-in-cheek aspect to both the previous video. Uh, David Satz mentioned the Simpsons reference on that one. Uh, and this one, you know, both of these videos were created already during the COVID-19 lockdown. So we wanted to do something a little different with a little different style and a little bit of humor. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's a short video. Afterwards, I'll talk a little bit more about the product and add uh, some details. So stay tuned for that. And then following that, uh, I'll be watching the boards very closely for any questions and answering uh, in detail. So um, stay tuned. All right, so let's, uh, let's roll the, the video. Hi, Carl Winkler here from Electrosonics. This is a product I'm really excited to tell you about. The new DPR digital plug-on transmitter is a natural addition to our D-squared family, sharing the same wideband tuning range, 24-bit 48 kilohertz transmission, and fantastic sound quality. Like the previous units, the DPR provides 5, 15, and 48 volt phantom power. The new transmitter also includes 256-bit AES CTR mode encryption and allows for several different key policies including universal, shared, and standard. Frequency response is further extended and flattened when compared to previous generations, with low frequencies now all the way down to 25 Hz. A selectable high-pass filter is included, just like on the older ones. In addition, the new plug-on also offers onboard recording via micro SD card. Amazingly, the DPR keeps the same form factor and rugged machined housing as the previous generation HM and HMA plug-on units. Most of all, I'm excited about the sound quality of this unit. With wider dynamic range and a lower noise floor, you'll have to experience it yourself to see what I'm talking about. Here's what veteran production sound mixer Aaron Cujo Cooley, CAS, had to say. For more information, take a look at electrosonics.com, contact your dealer, or talk to one of our technical representatives. Stay safe out there, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. We're back out to Carl. Again, i got to do my little switch here to get him his audio back, so we've got you here. So, Carl, I loved seeing you doing your head nod. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> well, it's kind of a reference to when we first uh, started playing around with the prototypes. Uh, we brought one actually to the IBC show so that Jim Bacher and I could listen to it and play with it. And that was right when Sheps was introducing their CMC-1. So they came around to our booth and loaned us a microphone for it. And we kind of had it under lock and key, but uh, both Karen from Sheps and myself and Jim uh, listened to it uh, with their mic and walked it around the trade show floor. And I mean, it was, it was stunning. We were very excited about it and very low noise floor. It walked really well. Uh, so that's where that comes from. It, it really is fun to listen to. I mean, you know, the boom mic is so critical and having a low no noise floor is just uh, really, really important as we all know. And we've seen a number of uh, digital products start to enter that field. So uh, it, it's, here's our entry. And uh, so a couple things I wanna point out, uh, there is some uh, very old information kind of starting to circulate on this product uh, from our FCC uh, grant information. And uh, so the product looks now like you see it in these pictures. Uh, what's been circulating is, is a prototype with no finish on it. 
Uh, and as you can see here, you know, it looks a lot like uh, any current electrosonics product with the, uh, the ebony electroless nickel finish. It's exactly the same size and shape as the HMA and the HM before it. So the same pouches would fit on it and that kind of thing. The same uh, watertight sleeve uh, as well. So those are kind of some key things. Um, to cover a couple other things, first of all, some of our newer transmitters have this, uh, what's called, we call it the zippy on. Uh, you know, in the past, you've had to push the buttons and hold for three seconds. And so this one now, what you see is, boom, it's on. And the same as the zippy off. So when I press that, uh, it's much quicker and easier. So that's one little thing I wanted to talk about. Um, another thing that comes up often is that uh, with the digital transmission, people are uh, talking about the relatively low RF powers uh, related to some of the other products that we make in the analog or the hybrid realm. And so for instance, uh, this product offers uh, 25 and 50 milliwatt settings. So we get people starting to ask, well, what about 100 milliwatts? I want the range that I get with an HMA. Uh, but the way that the digital modulation uh, hits the measurement tools versus analog modulation is different. We're talking about a very different peak to average ratio. And that's really the key concept. Peak to average ratio with digital transmission is much greater. So the average power is lower. Uh, but I would say that and the tests that I've done and we've done around here, um, you know, 50 milliwatts with digital, like in this unit, is really closer in performance in the real world to about 125 milliwatts. It's almost two to one or even a little bit more in terms of range. So that's why you're seeing such low powers from many uh, digital transmitters. So that's one thing I wanted to cover. And uh, I do have a little bit of bad news for those folks in Canada. Uh, this product is not available in Canada. Uh, there's going to be a variant that will be a few months later. And that's because they've changed their regulations and uh, a plug-on transmitter like this normally uses the body of the unit and then the microphone for an antenna and the Canadian regulations require there being an external antenna. So just FYI. Um, let's see what else. Uh, we do also get questions about the form factor of the plug-on, you know, quote unquote, why don't we go with something like the SSM? And uh, really, this is a very proven form factor. It's very, very tough. We found that that's important. If these ever get dropped, they're, they're made incredibly tough. But also the runtime with two double A's is gonna be longer than it is with a single LB50 type rechargeable unit that's in many of those micro transmitters. So that's another uh, factor. Um, let's see here. Uh, you know, also, of course, we wanted to maintain the kind of audio performance and radio performance that we've established with our D squared series, the DBU transmitter, the handheld, and so this is the next in that line. And I think you'll be pleased. You know, it's flat from 25 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. And again, the range is really exceptional with a very low audio noise floor. Uh, be aware, this is not on our website yet and it will not be on our website until Tuesday the 5th when the official announcement goes out. So you guys are getting a, a sneak preview, but uh, if you do go to the website and look for it, it's gonna not be there. So just hold tight, it'll be there soon. Um, and then uh, also we may get questions, you know, uh, to show you a little bit closer here. Uh, this is the recording card slot. It's record or transmit. Uh, hopefully that was clear. It's the same kind of format as you find uh, in our uh, uh, MTCR tiny recorder and also the, the SPDR. Uh, so it's 44, uh, uh, excuse me, 48 kilohertz, 24 bits. And then the other thing is that here is the, uh, the time code jam uh, uh, socket as well. And I just double checked with engineering to answer the question because it's not on the spec sheet yet, but it will be, is that we use a one part per million uh, TCXO uh, in this unit. So it's gonna have very, very accurate uh, time code retention as well. So a lot of exciting things in here in the, uh, the new DPR. And by the way, yeah, these product names are starting to get a little confusing. I get tongue tied myself. So many are similar with these three did three uh, three letter things. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's going to really fit into our line well. I think there's going to be uh, a lot of excitement. So definitely uh, get out there when you can get out there and listen to this thing. There should be samples at most of the major dealers within a few weeks to a month. So watch for that. And uh, I'm going to go look at the questions now, hopefully uh, answer as many as possible. And I look forward to seeing you guys in person real soon. So thanks for tuning in.
Right, there's a few questions in the stream there, so maybe you want to just okay. uh, take a look at the questions right now. Yeah, let me, if, uh, I'll, yeah, we will do. If you want to address them, any, any of them right now. Okay, yeah, Mac, Ruth, uh, record or transmit, asking about record and transmit. It's patent issue. That's about all I want to say about that. Same for our uh, SM wideband series transmitters as an example. Um, let's see, Canadian products. Uh, yes, it's true. The rules have changed. So there are HMA type products, all legal and, and good and everything. But when we went to get this one certified, uh, the rules had changed. So you may see other future plug-on transmitters in Canada with an external antenna as well. Let's see, update SPDR with auto functions, jam record. And some of those are in the update. If you go take a look, uh, that's uh, uh, in the uh, firmware uh, revision logs, you'll see what's there. Go to our website, resources, firmware, and look at the SPDR and see what's been updated in the firmware. Some of those functions are in there now. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Jim Bacher, our European rep, answered the question about latency, 1.4 milliseconds, very low latency transmission as well. And uh, let's see, antenna offer benefits. Yes, we think it will uh, for an external antenna uh, that it will offer additional range even above what it already does, which is exceptional. Uh, so we plan to offer the external antenna version worldwide. We think that uh, like Minnesota stations, for instance, will still get the one without the antenna and it'll be convenient and you can put it in the watertight cover, uh, but some may prefer the antenna version. Let's see here. Uh, what is the antenna on this transmitter, Rocketry Audio asks. It's uh, the, the body of the uh, unit and then the microphone, and then the version that'll have an external antenna will have an SMA jack, so there'll be a whip antenna externally, and it'll be you know like our typical whips. Let's see, can remotely record and stop. Yes, I forgot to mention, this unit does respond to the remote commands from the new Indian apps, like the uh, uh, the digital uh, app for uh, you know changing the settings on the transmitter itself and then the pdr remote will start and stop the recording on this unit so if you don't have those apps it's great to buy the whole suite of three i think it's freak finder plus pdr remote plus uh Lect electro rm those are the apps that you want to uh to access uh the functions here let's see uh, voice guitar asks, any countries that software can be unlocked for record and transmit? No, because of the, it's a U.S. patent and we're a U.S. manufacturer, so uh, this is a worldwide situation for us, but thanks for asking. Let's see, other questions. Uh, looks like I've covered what's there, but I'm going to keep monitoring the questions for a while and make sure that I answer everything I possibly can. So, again, thanks for watching. And, uh, oh, let's see, Gareth John, one more question. AES-42 mic powering. Uh, not in this version, no. Sorry about that. All right. Well, thank you very okay. much, Carl. And uh, All right, John. That's thank an exciting you. new product. I know that hardware is always fun to have, and uh, it's always nice to have hardware in April. <laughs> fun to design, too, as you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always challenges. Excellent. But, uh, uh, thanks next so up, much, John. Uh, thank you, Carl. Uh, next up, we've got a uh, presentation from KTEC. So let's go to the uh, videotape on KTEC. Is it on? Yes, yeah, it's running. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi it's Brenda and Tino from KTEC. This is our machine shop. It's very empty, which is really sad because it's April 2020 and that's just the way it is right now. Not much we can do about it. Um, because nobody's here, we're having some fun and playing on the forklift truck, which I probably should not be doing. Uh, anyway, so it's uh, Sound Summit 2020. We're here at KTEC, and we are going to pass this off to our friend Don Hale, so he can introduce a few of our new products and talk to you from his home in Fallbrook. Yeah, Don, show us some new products. Thank you, Tino. And again, thanks again to uh, Brenda at KTEC for allowing me to bring you this video from my shop here in uh, Fallbrook. All hunkered down, of course. Today I want to talk about the new uh, jumper cables from KTEC. These are the boom pole to mixer cables. They're really cool. They come in 5, 10, 20, and 40 feet available. They're double shielded, woven, and aluminum shielding. So the shielding properties are fantastic. So if you happen to get into that 
environment where you might get interference on that mic level line. Uh, they have a better retraction feature. They're available with the standard Noitrek straight connectors and also available with the standard Noitrek and right angle low profile connectors. As you can see, they come with the, uh, this one comes with the straight for the male and the female is the uh, right angle. I also wanted to talk to you about the new KTEC low profile XLR right angle connectors. Here they are. These have the, uh, the custom made cap uh, from KTEC, so they're easily serviceable out in the field. The, they provide extraordinary strain relief through this really cool little channel right through here. And then here's the cap, and there's the retainer screw. They're orientable, so depending on how you want to plug it into your device or cable, according to the angle or the position, you can do that. They're low profile. They're serviceable in the field, which is really a great advantage to a lot of you people that do the production work out in the field. And uh, they're made with the uh, Neutrek components along with the custom KTEC cap. Both these uh, cables and the connectors are available now through your KTEC dealer or contact uh, KTEC Direct. Uh, this is Don Hale and Fallbrook in my shop. All hunker down and I'm going to give it back to uh, Tino. Take care. Thank you, Don. Here we are in our assembly room, which is also very quiet because nobody's here. But we have lots of friends all over the world and we are going to introduce... William Monroe. He will show us also a product which we've been selling since last year and pretty successful. But I think you should know about it too. William, up to you. Hi, Brandon and Tino. How are you? William Monroe, creator of the Boombox here, hunkered down live in Los Angeles. I've got a fairly new item from KTEC I'd like to share with everyone. It's called the Mighty Boom Cable. If you're tired of buying a new cable every three or four months for your external boom cable, this is your answer. It's, uh, it's made with six large gauge wires redundant on the three pins. Super strong and it's got this straight section on the end that makes it super easy and smooth in your boom stand. It's really strong. It's also great for uh, ENG because it can go take the outdoors so well. It's called the Mighty Boom Cable. Thought I'd share it with everybody. Back to you on the factory floor. Thank you, William Monroe. Congratulations, by the way, for wrapping Modern Family. Now I'm in my, on my way into the shipping room where Brenda's already waiting for me. Hi, this is our shipping room and uh, nothing shipping. <laughs> which is lousy, uh, but that's just the way it is. So Don't worry about it. We come better, stronger back as before. Yeah. Don't worry, boom happy. I said, don't worry, boom Yay! happy. <laughs> so we're going to pass off to our friend. Ken Strain. Ken Strain. He's waiting to show you something, too. Boom operator and educator. Over to you, Ken. I'm Ken Strain, boom operator since 1993, K-Tech customer since 1997 been buying their boom poles, love them, and I'm here with the new KTEC Boom Pole Classic Pro to show you a little bit about what makes this boom pole so awesome. Uh, it is a complete evolution of design in their boom poles. First of all, super light, very, very light boom pole, um, quick locking collars, incredibly precise uh, sections that come in and out. I mean, it, it is the tolerances are so tight, but it makes it nice and smooth and quiet when we're doing pole extractions and retractions. Um, not only that, it's amazingly stiff. Like you guys want to put a transmitter at the end of it? No problem. I got you. Look at how stiff that is. Barely any movement at all. Anyway, Super happy with this new boom pole. I hope you like it too. Take care. Thank you, Ken. We're here in the sewing department. A very nice little department with a lot of fur. Are we gonna pass it off to another good friend? I think we should. Um, I think Thomas Pop is waiting. All right, here's Thomas. Thomas, over to you. Hey everyone, this is Thomas Pop from Video Mantis. I wanna say thank you, Brenda and Tino, for bringing me along on the Sound Summit 2020. Today, I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about a new product from KTEC, which is called the KIP, the KTEC Interview Pole. And simply what it is, is a smaller boom pole that's, yes, it can be used by a boom operator, but this is...
for the reporters that are out in the field risking their lives right now to get us the news, these essential workers that are keeping us informed in our homes. And I love the fact that after checking out the news and seeing how news reporters are taping microphones to the end of a hockey stick instead of getting close to their people, well, they decided to make something a little bit better, and that's how the kip came along. This is a two-section boom pole that extends to around eight or nine feet to help establish that safe distance protocol. And it's pretty simple. You just put your interview mic in the microphone clip up at the top, and you can even use different accessories like the K-Tech mic flag, and they even have microphone protection covers that go over the top, that now you have the ability to keep your distance from your talent or your interviewee, as well as have a protection so they're not getting saliva and contaminants all over your microphone. And then what you can do at the end of the day is just take them off and wash them and make sure that they're good to go for the next one. So I have to say I'm very proud of K-Tech and I'm very grateful for them. Not only are they creating products that help keep us safe and, and help us do our jobs in the field, they're also keeping other people safe and thinking about the future. So thank you so much, K-Tech, for doing what you do. We love you to death, and we can't wait to see what we come up with next. Thank you, Thomas, for introducing the KIP. Oh, Thomas also has um, workshops, right? Yes, he has a, um, an online platform called videomantis.com. And currently he's offering 50% on all courses. And by the way, the kip he was introducing is the one I'm using all the time here to do our little video. We keep the distance to everybody, except from each other. So I'm sure you know that K-Tech is also responsible for the Stingray line of audio bags. So we would like to introduce uh, someone who is going to show you a little bit about what we're working on. You want me to hand it over? Yes. To Jared? Of course. Hey Jared, it's your turn. Thanks, great to be here. So I've got one of the prototypes for the new Stingray bag here, and right off the bat you can see there's some extra space on the side so that this could accommodate a Sound Devices 888. This is a Sound Devices 833. You can see it still fits really nicely, but more space on the sides is something people have been definitely asking for. Next really obvious thing here is that there are two screw mounts mounted straight to the bag. You've got a cell phone here, a shark fin there. The possibilities are endless, something that a lot of people would love. I think there are endless possibilities for. The of the bag actually comes up slightly less high than before. And if you've ever used a six or an eight series, you know that trying to get to these little faders sometimes can be a pain. And now that this is above the back of the bag, it's so much easier to reach them. In the front, there's a hole, an opening in the front pouch that you can actually feed cables into the bag, whether you have extra receivers, antenna distro, BDS. Now you can go straight into the bag with them instead of outside and then back in. It's so much cleaner. And then if you look at the side here, you can see the color of the bags change to this sort of speckly silver, which is something I really like. I like the solid black. I like the speckly silver. They're both great. So, and then last thing I want to point out here is the kickstand. It's not mounted to the bag because that would interfere with the mesh on the back, but it's still, you can slip it in the side pocket. Anything with a corporate or interview, you just kind of lean the bag forward. It really, it works fantastically well. Overall, I'm loving this. I can't wait to see where this thing goes next and with the release model. Thanks so much. Back to you. Thank you, Jared Elkin. Thanks. We're going to have a completely new line of bags available, maybe July, right? July should be available, yeah. And we are going to have the small, light, which is what Jared was showing you. We're also going to have a new junior bag, which is going to be much smaller. So it will be available for the Nova, the 833. The small bag is going to work for the 888 and the 833. And then we're also going to have a large bag, which will work for the Scorpio. Yeah. They're all lighter, new fabric, beautiful new It's a whole new generation of bags right now. There's, with all these new features, I think it's um, almost a game changer. So, uh, Tino is going to show you a few more things around the shop. Yeah, let me show you. And here are our aluminum tubes. All black anodized, waiting to eventually become a Avalon boom pole. These are the colors of the Avalon boom pole. Once we put these together with the tubes we've seen before, plus a few extra parts of course, and some labor, um, after that we have a boom pole. So these are the colors of the classic boom pole. They were basically finished, now they have to be deburred and anodized, and then they're ready to go into assembly. So here you can see the parts, or some parts, of the low profile XLR connector from us. I'd like to show you the little channel inside here for the, for the cable, which 
basically is the strain relief. You can almost pull a truck with that, it's really amazing. These parts we have seen before, the one for the low profile right angle connector from us is the channel with the extreme strain relief. And we have some more work done to this here. Uh, some holes were done, which are really allowing the positioning of the XLR. And then once it's done, they're gonna go get the bird anodized and we'll come back for assembly. Our boom poles are Academy Award winners. We're not showing off, but we're very proud of it. Here is the new Classic Pro with a right angle connector from us. And we have the new Psychic attached to this one for the transmitter. So it's low profile, so you can fit it into your boom stand. We also have now a flow through module. So if you prefer the straight cables. And we have our new Traveler coming out very soon. Six feet extended, so it's the KP6. And it collapses down to 21 inches. Thank you for joining us at the Sound Summit 2020. It was a virtual Sound Summit. I don't think we've ever done that before. I liked it. No, it was pretty new to me, too. So if you have any questions, just email Tino. T-I-N-O. At ktechpro.com. Stay safe out there. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. All right, we are joined by uh, Tino and Brenda. Now we got your audio in the stream, so uh, welcome. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks, John, for having us. So where are you? you it looks like you're outside right now. Yeah, we're in my backyard. <laughs> so, it, And it should be nice and warm because we're in California, but no, it's not. <laughs> it's cold. So I'm seeing there's a there's a question we uh, we previewed the SL2 yesterday or Paul did uh, I guess there's a question is uh, you know does the SL2 fit in some of the new uh, you know Stingray Junior bags and such Well I would hope so Oh one second <laughs> the question was Stingray Junior now the No junior? he said new no. It'll fit in the small but yeah. the small is going to be a, a smaller small or a bigger junior So it okay. will fit in Stingray bags absolutely Yeah that it won't fit in the junior. Gotcha. So you have some show and tell there. Uh, what do you got? Um, what do we have, you know? Well, for starters, we have our new um, uh, Classic Pro Paul, the Traveler, which is um, uh, collapsed 21 inches and extended six feet. So it's a great travel pole and lightweight as usual. Um, has the features of a regular Classic Pro. It's sturdy. It's um, less of a bend. You can remove the head and you can cable it after the fact without soldering. Very simply, it's probably less than a minute. You're ready to do a cable to um, use a cable pole or go the other way if you need to take a cable out. Same thing. Yeah, and then um, and this one we haven't introduced yet. So this is the new Traveler. Oh, yeah. So it packs up really small and <laughs> extends to six feet, which seems to be a very good length right now six feet mm -hmm. kind of like a catchphrase you know you got social social, social six feet, six feet. <laughs> uh then there's another question if uh, can you buy the kickstand piece separately the new pull uh, the new bags are going to have um a separate kickstand so um if we we probably will have them available separately um the junior already has an integrated kickstand but that triangular one that you saw jared show um, that will be available separately as well. So in the junior, it's still integrated, and um, on the other bags, it's a separate unit, which has a attachment point with Velcro on the top rim. You basically do the same thing. Gotcha. Uh, anything you want to add? Anything you want to tell all the folks, the 412 folks that are presently watching right now? <laughs> well, that's nice. That's really great. Well, <laughs> I, hi, and um, you know, I really miss seeing everyone at NAB. I miss people, and uh, I don't know. This community is not that big. It's kind of a small community, and 
20, we're 25 years next year. We've been in business 25 years. And I don't know how many NAVs I've been to or trade shows Tino's been to. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I appreciate that you're doing this, but I really miss seeing everybody. So even though I can't see you all, thank you all for being here. Um, there's one other product which I'd like to point He's out. Such a salesman. Yeah, sorry, I'm a sa <laughs> Excuse me, right, you Jim hired me for that. Okay, salesman. <laughs> we have a new um, low-profile um, right-angle XLR connector um, that should be available in the next couple of weeks for only twenty nine ninety five. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Johnny. By the way, <laughs> I like the pull. Um, well, yeah, you're good at answering questions I was, I was on the fly. I didn't have my glasses. So this connector is great because it's not only very low profile, it has the Neutrix front, it has uh, housing from us in the back, which is orientable or Wait, what's it? Carl, Carl called it block. Block, what, block what is that I forgot. Again? Carl, you posted it a minute ago. Clockable? Clockable. Yeah, clockable. That's what it was. Correct. Clockable. I like it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then you basically can rotate it in the right position where you need it in the back. Um, right now, we only have it on the boom pole, but like I said, it's going to be available soon separate as a separate item. And uh, um, it's, it's, um, there's, uh, we had measured it um, at actually at Electrosonics regarding uh, RF. They had no measurable RF on this. So we like to call it uh, RF, not shielded, but probably uh, because it's, yeah, protected, because it's an aluminum housing and uh, everyone who knows about RF. It's telling me at least that that's enough for calling it RF uh, protected. Yeah, and there's a question if they're sold separately, and that's what we're doing. So yes. right now they're available with the classic pro poles, and the separate uh, housing will be available probably within the week or two. Well, you have to do all the paperwork for it. And so yes, and, and give them four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to um, uh, make those caps in the back uh, color coded. So you basically, um, if you had five different connectors, you actually know where they go. So that would help. But this is the last thing I want. Yeah, and as far as the bags being lighter, the new bags are lighter. What we did is we changed the, the material on the inside. So uh, we, we, we realized that the frame itself is not what was making it heavy. The material on the inside was like a PVC and it was actually making it a little heavier. So we replaced the material completely. We did on one of the samples uh, change it on the front pouch and we found that the front pouch was too saggy. So we did go back to the heavier material just on the front pouch but they are much lighter. Um, we're also gonna take um, a suggestion from a customer and we're gonna color code the zipper. Oh yeah, so it's poles. easier to recognize which bag, which pocket you're actually opening. Yeah, that's something that we're gonna integrate on the next version. This is just a sample. Now um, that's, an junior, eight, that's an 833 in that bag and which which bag oh, is that? You just like that. that? Is that what that is? I don't oh. know, it's something like that. You really wanna advertise this right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's at the 833. Only the good stuff. Oh, and you know what's nice about the new bags, which we haven't shown you, is we have a new ring yeah. cover. You open it up to so show real quick how quick it goes in there. You just slide it in. I know it's kind of strange on camera like that, but and then you roll it, kind of like a like a boating pouch. Not the mm -hmm. Boating That's bag. Pretty much like that. And you have a handle. Go. That's there new also. For the new bags, yeah, so we'll have that feature. on the small, the junior, mm -hmm. and the Scorpio version. Yeah. Very nice. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, it's great to see you all, and uh, you know, we're we're glad to be able to put on this little sound summit thing here and uh, <laughs> give it a whirl. Why well, not? I know everybody's <laughs> all over the world, and it's it's cool that we can all get together and. This virtual show is something different, of course, yeah, but uh, it's kind of fun. And thanks for putting this together and, and dealing with all the, I don't know, all the different companies and people and putting it all together. It can't be easy. So thank you. Over there in Wisconsin somewhere where they have Yes, we are at uh, Master Control here in Madison, Wisconsin. And in fact, uh, our next presentation, we're going to go across the pond. We're going to go to uh, Paris, France, and we're going to uh, have a presentation from our friends and Sound Devices distributor, VDB. Awesome. Okay, well, we'll say hi. then I know it's been said enough, but stay safe. And uh, I guess we can say it enough. Um, right. Greetings to friends. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Hi, everyone. I'm Louise from VDB Boom Pulse. Thank you for joining us for Sound Summit 2020. We would like to introduce you the new version of our Quarterton Boom Pole and share with you some tips. 
VDB is a family company founded by my father, Stefan Vandenberg, in 1984. He used to be boom operator and sound mixer for many years. Passionated by sound and very handy man, he started to design the boom pool of his dreams with all the features he would love to have for himself. His priority have always been to design a light, rigid and weight balanced pool. Over the years, VDB launched no less than 12 series, from four and five sections in the 80s to what we think to be our best products since 23 years now, the six section boom pool. We have a range of six models that can apply to any situation. Why six sections? With the years and experience, new constraints were implemented. We wanted a shorter folded system, extendable to a longer size. And six section was, in our opinion, the best ratio to achieve that. Let's take an example. Uh, our extra large pole is 18.4 feet, so 5.6 meters fully extended. Even though, thanks to the six section, it only measures 3.73 feet, so 1 meter 10 when fully collapsed. That makes the transport very easy. Well, now that you know that you want to make a six section boom pole, you have to choose the diameter of your sections. And this includes two concerns. The first one is um, that the tiny section must be able to receive a standard XLR uh, connector. Uh, in order to optionally insert and remove a cold cable uh, or straight cable in the pool without the use of any tool. The second one is that the external diameter um, is, um, of the thicker section uh, remains ergonomic. We choose a mean value which is the most comfortable posture for both small and bigger hands. We never change those diameters. That's why all the improvements we've made since remain compatible with the majority of our older pools, allowing us to fix booms up to 25 years old. Now that you have your structure comes the most important, the material. Being a fisherman for hobby, Stefan discovered the extremely light graphite fish pools compared to the heavy aluminum pools they were using at work. He decided then to design and manufacture the first carbon fiber boom pool in the world, developing the very first parallel pipes in carbon fiber. And nowadays, all the professional manufacturers offer boom pools in carbon fiber. And not only them, look, now all the cameras, recorders, they all have carbon structures. Actually, it was the lightweight material you could find 36 years ago, and it's still the case. Every year, we try different and new models of carbon to always ensure a constant improvement. Actually, you'll see that on this new version, the color is slightly different and the new model we had changed for is more rigid than the previous one. What guides us and makes our boom pole so unique are the super thin layers of carbon that makes them so light and actually the lightest you can find today in the industry. We have to be honest, it's again a compromise that implies they are more vulnerable faced to aggressive uses and situations. But once again, a priority is lightness and perfect weight balance to provide the boom ops the best tool for an everyday use. VDB's choice allows presenting a large XL pool of 1 meter 10 extendable to 5 meter 6, weighing less than 750 grams, 1.6 pounds, and offering a bending not exceeding 44 centimeters horizontally, for a weight of 1 kilogram applied at its top. By the way, a 1 meter 10 extension is available, allowing our XL pool to reach 6 meters 60, so 21.6 feet. Let's talk about locking collars. We launched two years ago our latest and more precise technology, the quarter turn locking system that is quite a revolution on all the different ways. This quarter turn clockwise mechanism is the faster locking system and allows you 
to quietly adjust the length, just sliding out the tube during a take. It's also the unique system that has no threads and that's much more efficient than the traditional conical clamp, easier to clean and permits to dismantle the pole in a sec. It's that simple. Let me give you some tips. First one, holding both the ring and the insider section when tightening will improve the lifetime of the knuckle. Escorting will also enhance efficiency and render the hole gripping much stronger. Second tip, to avoid damaging your system, be smooth. That seems obvious, but if you use it right way, you don't need to force. Um, you will see a small variation in the new model that has a miniature screw in the first ring to avoid losing it when you use uh, your top screw as a quick release. Uh, we'll talk about the quick release in a few sec. Let's first talk um, about the different coats. The shining top coat over the bigger section absorb all the handling noise versus uh, the other section that have a matte outer covering to avoid light reflections on the set. On L and extra large boom pull, you can see that all along the sections, uh, color rings act as length markers. Once you have found the best uh, position, thanks to those markers, you can reset and easily remind your previous size. This is perfect for a low selling situation, for instance. Now let's talk about uh, the quick release. You may realize that on most of our models since the 90s and on our actual range, there um, is a quick release top screw. This is a proper accessory included with all our pulls that you should let screwed on all your different suspensions. This uh, removable tip helps you to be very fast when changing one to another. Um, as we are always in a major hurry, this is really a great tool. Uh, another tip when you need uh, a plant mic, just use our range of small adapters, top STMA. We have different um, lengths of those, uh, longer ones to use for a transmitter uh, and smaller ones. Uh, it's exactly the same system. You let the quick release screw on the spigot, on magic arms, small rigs or whatever you use and switch it easily and quickly. Uh, for example, uh, your boom mic to your plant mic. Um, and thanks to the internal 383 screw, you can do different installation. You use it for steel bars and so on. Last but not least, let's have a look to our cable and cuffs. As said previously, all our booms can be wired internally without the use of any tool. The small models come with a standard plastic heel. The L and the XL comes with a soft rubber heel. This one is replaced by an XLR threaded heel when adding an internal removable cable. For handy use, you can add a rear side exit XLR. For those who don't use a wireless system, we also have the all style heel to be used with a straight cable. Thanks to the common diameters to all models, these accessories can be switched between your different VDB poles at your preference. If you want more tips, have a look to our other tutorial videos uh, on our YouTube channel and find uh, all our news on our social networks and new websites. Uh, last word to thanks uh, Sound Devices for organizing um, this great event and inviting us. Thank you for watching and see you soon. All right, we are joined again with uh, another representative. Luis, thank you for joining us. It's, uh, it's getting late in, uh, in Paris. Actually, I, I assume you're in Paris, correct?
Yes, correct. Hi, John. Thank you for having us. Uh, yes, it's about uh, seven thirty here, but uh, we are very happy to be with you and uh, participating to this great event. Um, and also, thank you for all the customers that support our product. Um, it uh, has been a very long time now that my father uh, created this company, and uh, uh, I'm his first fan. Um, so I would like just to add a little things that I didn't mention and that I think that our customers really appreciate um, is that actually we don't change uh, the diameters. Uh, so we are able to upgrade the old uh, six section pools. Um, and this includes all the, uh, the pools from the 90s. Uh, so we can upgrade to this new quarter turn locking system, which is uh, I think uh, really cool. Um, also, I see that there is some question for uh, spare parts, maintenance, etc. So um, we do this upgrade um, in, indeed in our workshop in the southwest of France, and this is this the, there. Um, it's also there that we do all the repairs, maintenance, also customization for uh, some customers, um, and we still get very old spare parts. So we are able to repair very old pools, so you can keep your pools uh, for more than, I think, 30 years now. Um, or, or, and we still have some for the 35 years old pools. And we are also able to ship any section that needs to be replaced, and you can find all your spare parts um, to your local uh, distributor. Um, yes, and we also do some customization and a lot for all the interview pools for the small ones that are very easy to, to do different lengths. Um, so yes, also ask to your local dealer or also contact us directly by email. We have just launched a new website, vdbbompools.com. So you can also have uh, get more information there. And uh, yeah, I don't know if there is more I'm Which looking at the stream. It, it, it's, uh, there's a comment that somebody still has their original VDB poll. And uh, I know several uh, production mixers who have uh, very old VDP polls that they still use, uh, you know, daily. So uh, it's a testament to, uh, you know, to their performance. Yes, that's what we like, to that they keep it uh, for a very, very long time and that we can still uh, repair them. Um, but they can also buy a new model if they, if they want. Um, so and then here's yeah, a question. I will be answering. Yeah, there's a yes. question uh, relating to Sound Devices product uh, at VDB. Uh, is uh, is the CL16 available yet to see at uh, at VDB in Paris? Yes, we just received it uh, two days ago, so we are ready to ship and also it's available here in our store in Paris. Um, we are in confinement, but we, uh, uh, I'm still here at the office, so I can do any shipment if I need it. Uh, and yes, absolutely. It's a positive uh, answer. Let's see, any other questions? Uh, if you comments uh, I, I will be able to also answer by chat if there is other questions all right excellent well thank you very much for joining us and uh, you be well in uh, in Paris and your in your family as well yes thank you and you too all take care and um, hope to see you very soon in another show or virtual show is also nice to to, to be here and uh, yes, we miss you all guys. So yes, take it's, care. it's been about uh, a year uh, since uh, I was out in Paris doing customer visits with you. So uh, unfortunately so this for year- the CL16 maybe. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully soon, yes. Well, I, I, I'm sure we are do, doing a workshop for the CL16 soon. Yes. Uh, we've got uh, another presentation coming and this is a, a new manufacturer that you may not be familiar with a company called Film Devices, and they have a, uh, a unique uh, product for uh, mixer bags. So let's, uh, let's play the Film Devices video. Film Devices patent pending rack and bag has evolved location sound kits to a whole new level. No more equipment floating loosely in a bag. Every device is in an accessible, secure location which you configure to your needs. All connections are easy to reach and cable rat nests are eliminated. 
our system converts from a shoulder or harness bag to a desk console. The bag has access to all sides of the mixer. Features include an optional built-in power distro system using AudioRoot brand equipment and our front-loaded slide-in high-Q battery sled. Power cables are available in four lengths. In addition, the rack and bag is expandable to include a second row of wireless devices. The outer nylon bag height is adjustable as well. The rack and bag is available in three sizes which can accommodate most recorders or mixers. Carbon fiber and aluminum construction assures high strength and light weight. Other options include a rigid handle, swing out phone holder, and a wing kit for the small and medium models. Hi, I'm Ken Martini, uh, the owner of Film Devices, and besides being a filmmaker, I really like designing and building film equipment. Most of my designs come from practical applications. Uh, for instance, the uh, rack and bag was conceived when I was doing location sound for a Shark Tank episode. Uh, I had four people loved up during that episode, and right in the middle of it, I lost one of my connections inside my sound bag. Uh, I had this frantic going through my bag, trying to find the loose connection. There were a bunch of people on the set that were just sitting there waiting for me. I was completely flustered, and uh, it just was horrible. And so right then and there, I said, there must be a better way of doing this. And so I thought, well, we need to get to all the connections, and uh, so let's combine a rack mount and a bag. And the bag can be stripped away to reveal everything, and so here it is. This is the multi-reel. Uh, this came into being uh, as I worked on music sets and went, uh, drove me a little bit crazy trying to get those cables reeled up, especially between sets when you only had a few minutes to get all the cables out of the way and then back again. So uh, I thought, well, there's got to be a better way of doing that. So um, I've come up with a nice system that has uh, guides all of the cables right in. And, uh, and then locks them with a rubber band. And very simple, this one holds 12 cables and it'll hold from a 15 to 40 foot cable. Uh, this is our larger reel. It um, has six compartments or six reels and uh, it'll take 50, 75 and 100 foot cables. It'll take the thicker cables. So it's got, uh, as you can see, these are the heavier cables, and uh, this can be used for XLR or for digital cable, uh, and uh, it's, once again, it's all, it's all done with beautiful aircraft aluminum, and each side has got dual bearings in it. It's just a really slick and designed to last and take a good beating, and uh, hopefully we're going to have a road case for two at some point. Once the concepts take shape in my mind, they are then passed on to Adam, uh, and he makes a 3D drawing of it. And then from there, it goes to my favorite place, the shop. And this is the shop, and uh, look at it. This is where we take all the ideas and manifest them into reality. Thank you for watching, and check us out online as we roll out new and innovative products. All right, we've got Ken from Film Devices with us, and let's get Ken's audio into the stream. Welcome, Ken. This is my first time meeting you, so uh, it's a pleasure to meet you face-to-face -face here. Uh, John, it's really a pleasure, too. Uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting me into this, uh, I want to call it a, uh, a luminary group of companies. <laughs> uh, so I feel like I'm really among good company now. Uh, my name is Ken, and uh, I'm from Film Devices. And um, I'd like to introduce you to our rack and bag uh, location sound equipment management system. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, here is the here is the main product that we are featuring, and uh, uh, we've created the whole way of uh, reimagining the way sound 
uh, equipment works on location. So instead of a uh, instead of a bag with everything rattling around in it, we've decided to fasten everything down and treat it more like a rack mount. So um, let me look at my little notes here. <clears throat> So the uh, rack and bag has a uh, optional built-in power distribution system. And uh, that here, I'll just bring this up so we can look at it a little better. Okay. So the um, power distro is, is fastened down. It's actually screwed right down to the plate. Uh, the battery is on a sled that we've created exclusively, and uh, it works with uh, any high Q battery. And uh, we will be selling the whole power distribution system separately. So as a package, you'll get a power distro, a sled, uh, you supply your own battery, and we'll supply five cables with it of varying lengths. And uh, you can specify what kind of cables you like. So that's a separate item. Uh, so I'm going to loosen this guy up so I can rotate it. Uh, over here we have a uh, phone holder, and it actually folds back into the uh, device so it can be always on. And let's see if we can get our wingman back again. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to take this off and just show you how this works. So this is a fold up one. So we could take these off and in the folded position, it's down. The wings come back. The wings are an option as well. So you don't have to have them. The deck level, as if you can see this right here, this deck can be changed to any height. So you can have a set of receivers fastened down to this top plate and a set of receivers that flip up. So you can put, uh, you can probably get 10 channels of uh, receivers within this system, just on a little one. Um, let's see what other things are about it. Um, all the cables are easy to get to. Uh, everything is accessible, the back, sides. It, it just makes a lot more sense to be able to get to your cables. And, um, and, I, from my experience doing sound, about 20% about of the time I'll, we have a boom and we're running, running and gunning. And the other 80% of the time I'm sitting at a desk somewhere with my sound bag propped up with something and, um, and with all the cables stuck inside of it. And so um, using this system, the bag... Uh, this is the bag for this unit. Uh, just strips off when you don't need it. Uh, when you are using it, uh, you can get to all sides, including the rear. So, so that uh, so it allows you full access, just like a normal bag would. But um, and, and so when you don't need it in a bag, you just whip it off, and now you've got a whole console sitting for you. It, it just makes a lot more sense to me to do it that way. Uh, let me have a cue card. I've got uh, somebody here show me cue cards. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, so we, uh, offer, we offer four different size power cables to kind of keep things neat. Uh, you can see inside of this thing that there's, look how, look, look how those cables are just so, neat and tidy and you just don't have that uh, whole mess anymore. I, I just love it that I can get to everything. Um, let's see, and uh, let's see, we got that and bone mount, okay, harness. So what, we have, what we're doing is we're creating a whole ecosystem. So not only do we have the bag, we, you know, we're not making a really fancy harness, maybe it comes later, but we now have a harness that fits it, which is gonna be very inexpensive. It even has a little cup over here so that you can put, hold your boom pole in case you're running and gunning and you have your, a mixer and you've got your boom pole in one hand. And so now you see so you're a one man band and this strips off and oops, 
And then you can mount it on this side. So lefty, lefty or righty, you can put this boom pole holder. Um, okay, and um, now we have this cute little boom pole that I'll grab right here. And so we, we've developed a boom pole as well. And it um, folds down really short. It fits inside of a travel carry-on. And so you can take your boom pole with you. We've built our own boom pole holder and we've matched it with a Matthews mini, uh, a, a mini, sorry, a mini grip head, sorry. And uh, so this whole thing with the carbon fiber model, we have it in aluminum and carbon fiber. This weighs one pound, six ounces. It's the lightest boom pole kit that you can take. Just add a C stand and you're ready to go. We are also working on a shock mount. We're working on various things. We want to, we like to create whole ecosystems here. And so, um, and, and keeping with that ecosystem, I'm gonna move this aside. We are creating a sleeve. We see there's lots of sleeves and ways of holding your boom poles out there. And um, we decided that I, I don't need fancy protection on my boom pole. Uh, and so this is a really heavy ballistic nylon. And, and we're calling these the simple sleeves and they're gonna be really inexpensive. And, and boom poles are by nature, they're pretty hardy pieces of equipment. So they don't really need a lot. And so, uh, but these keep it from getting scratched and beat up. And so it's a very nice little system, has a strap, Velcro. We're gonna have four different sizes of these. And uh, so it should fit almost all boom poles. What we like about it, why we offer so many sizes is because I, I've seen somewhere there's only two sizes available. And so your boom pole is gonna be hiding inside of it and you're gonna to have to push this and dig around for it. Ours giving four sizes and a long piece of Velcro here allows for uh, a nice fit with many sizes and your handle is right there so you can pull it out. So it makes it for a very, um, a very easy to use system. So that's that. Okay, and I'm gonna put this back here. <clears throat> okay, and uh, so, um, so uh, I'm gonna go and show a couple more things here before I hit that next cue card. These are the three models. Uh, these three models can handle just about any piece of sound, any uh, mixer recorder combination that's out there. And so we here we have a mix pre eight, we have an 833 here, we have a 633 here. Uh, and so it handles just about any equipment. And the way we do it is we, the decks, the carbon fiber plates change height. And so they, compress we have on rubber bumpers so your recorders sitting on a nice cushion of rubber bumpers and it's squeezed and that's what holds that in place and so just by changing the height of those plates we can accommodate any size of equipment um, and uh, and let me see now the we are now uh, we are now starting to take orders for these they'll be shipping um, in July hopefully early July. And so you can pre-order it. And if you do pre-order it, we'll include a really nice uh, accessory uh, with it. And, uh, and so if you get in the queue, you'll be the, uh, you, you'll get in queue to get it, be one of the first people to own one of these. Uh, and then uh, let's see. And uh, so go to filmdevices.com and that's where you can see uh, all the stuff on display and we are making other equipment for other sections of the film industry. Um, and I'm just gonna finish up and show with the, um, show the multi-reel. 
All right. Um, let me show a different version of that. Okay. Okay. Just want to let's see if I can just prop this on here. The reason I want to bring this in close, I don't know if we can see it, is that um, the XLR cables, I'm going to just pull one out from here. Actually, I won't do that. There's a keyhole inside the core of this. So when you put your XLR cable, you just push the into the uh, your, your one end of your XLR cable connector into the keyhole. And once you have it in the keyhole, it uh, it's it then you want then you do your winding. And you already saw this in the video, so I won't go too far with it. But I just want I just wanted to point out that feature that um, your cable slides in really quickly and then you can get all your cables wound up. Uh, I found that uh, since I built this, I've been on I've been on about three different uh, kind of uh, uh, music live music setups. And I think it's given me about, uh, it's either about somewhere between 50 and 75% speed up in how I manage my cables. So it's really been a, a, good, a, uh, a good way of managing it. It's not for everyone. I can really see it uh, working in uh, uh, sound stages, studios where you um, have a lot, of, a lot of cables. The other thing is it adds um, a lot of life to your cable. Every time you twist your cables, they get twisted internally, you know, especially you got people on the set sometimes that don't quite know how to handle cables. And so this will add life to your cable. Your cables will lay flat. When you lay them out like that from a roll, they lay flat. If you have twists in them, the cables will kind of have a way of being snaking around. And so your set will even look nicer. So if you're, um, and you'll be tripping over less cords that are kind of making waves and so uh so overall uh i i like to uh keep my cables nice and neat on the set when, when i'm on a set it's like i go down and i pull them all and i stretch them and i tape them down and it's like um i go a little bit extra uh, not everybody does that but anyway the cable management system is a, a really nice uh, way to handle it um i think that's it and so let me see so <clears throat> thank you for watching uh, and uh, and it's really a privilege being a brand new company and being introduced this way. And with, uh, so thank you for your graciousness. Ken, we, uh, we like your name, Film Devices. Uh, it sounds, sounds familiar. <laughs> you know, Sound Devices has used, uh, obviously, Sound Devices, and we had our Video Devices products. And uh, so uh, best of luck. Those are some uh, I, I very unique tools. Yeah. I couldn't believe that that name was available. If you're still hearing me. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Oh, well, we've got uh, we, we've you. got one last presentation, and this is uh, from Sony. So let's uh, go to the video. How's the questions? Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. My name is Andy Munitz, and I'm product manager for Sony's professional audio group in our professional division. Um, and welcome to our NAB 2020 booth. Yeah, not so much. Uh, that show kind of got canceled. Well, welcome to our NAB virtual set. Yeah, not really. Maybe we could do that, but I'm, I'm just outside. You know, it's spring here in the Northeast, and uh, trees uh, are starting to bud, and the birds are chirping, and uh, I just wanted an excuse to get outside. So this is what you get, along with my quarantine beard, by the way. But uh, hopefully you're all doing well out there. So if you had been at our booth at NAB this year, you would have seen some of these following products. And I'll try to go through them, not with massive detail, but give you an idea what we've got. Um, we have a line of wireless called DWX. It's true digital wireless. We've been making this probably for about 12 or 13 years now. Uh, many people don't know Sony's been making wireless microphones since about 1960 or 1961. However, we sell a boatload of our digital wireless into our broadcast products line, which means that they fit in the back of our, a lot of our broadcast shoulder cams. And we sell lots of this stuff all around the world. 
However, you may not know that the slot in the back of many solar, all of Sony's shoulder cams is a little bit wider than Unislot, which is what you're all used to. So we had receivers that were a little bit too wide to fit into Unislot accessories in the world of location sound. Well, we have a brand new model called the DWR S03D, and guess what? It's Unislot size. And you can buy either a 25 pin connector on the bottom, or you can actually get a 15 pin connector to screw on. That will make sure that it fits with Sony camera and connects with the two channels of digital audio there as well. So that's an important thing. We also have the escutcheon plates that come with it, depending on whether it's going into a Sony size slot or a Uniswap size slot, and uh, make sure it fills up the hole and, and makes for secure mounting. However, um, this is true digital wireless, and as such, we've got a couple of body packs and a plug-on transmitter, but here's our body pack called the DWT-B03R. It's a small little magnesium, really solidly built rechargeable body pack and uh, uses our Sony CyberShot camera batteries, but it's small, it's magnesium, it's lightweight, it's IPX4 and 5 rated against uh, perspiration and moisture, and uh, you know, you get about seven hours at mid power out of one of those little batteries, and uh, it's also full uh, spectrum. So according to the FCC guidelines now, Anything between 14 and slivers of 38 is legal, and that this is uh, covered. Those frequencies are covered all in this one body pack. No blocks are necessary. The receiver also covers all of those frequencies. And finally, we also make a body pack called the DWT B30, which uses AA batteries, but it also has that same uh, no block, full FCC legal spectrum capability. Now, these transmitters are also Zigbee controllable from the receiver. You can pair up a transmitter individually to each channel one and channel two, and then you can call up at a distance of about 30 feet away from the receiver when you're using the portable gear, and you can call up the transmitter's menu and go ahead and set and change all the things on, on the transmitter, such as you can you know scan for new frequency and instantly set it out to the transmitter to change. You can put in one of 15 different low-cut filter settings, mic pre-gains. You can even remotely put the transmitters to sleep in a low-powered sleep mode to save batteries during a break. And you never have to go and dig into Talent's clothing to change any of these things. It's all good from about 30 feet away. Um, even when this is in our shoulder cam, we can uh, link the camera's power on and off state to the transmitter. So when you turn the camera on and off, the transmitter goes on and off. Everybody uh, changes and goes to a new location or has a lunch break. You come back, flip the camera back on, and the transmitter powers back on as well. These also have um, a choice of four different codecs. And that's nice because we have reduced the latency in our codecs in one of them down to an amazing 1.2 milliseconds, which is incredibly short, uh, short latency, very, very fast. But uh, codec number three specifically has an extra layer of error correction in there and handles burst errors. So it is particularly, um, uh, it protects against walkie-talkie noise on set and things like that. Now, the final thing I wanted to mention about this series without going into too much more detail is that you know, in the world of location sound, you all are pretty used to scanning for the quietest frequencies and, and, and making uh, sure everything uh, works out properly. However, some people are still nervous about scanning. So we have a new mode. Even though you can scan and pair up one transmitter and then leave it on and do it with a second channel, we have a new mode which does both channels at the same time. You can hit both the menu and the set button together. It's a little shortcut button hit. The unit takes off and scans through the entire FCC legal spectrum of 14 up to 38, and at about 50 seconds, it will give you and read out the two quietest frequencies it found, wherever you happen to be in the country or whatever, and it will say, do you want me to send those off to the two paired transmitters? And you go, yes, and then within no time, uh, both transmitters are paired up to the two best frequencies it found. So that's something new in this series. Um, kind of really important. Now, I'd like to talk just for a minute about something else that is uh, maybe has to do with the smallest thing we all deal with every, sing every single shoot, which is lavalier microphones. Lav mics are fabulous. Obviously, boom work is, is super important as well. But lav mics have always had a problem that, you know, depending on how you dress the cable, you can get cable noise. And lav manufacturers 
over the years have tried different methods of getting rid of that cable noise and loops and this and that and different mounting accessories and so on and so forth. But they've also tried to put coatings on cables or different pliability of cable. Well, and not with wonderful success. So don't ever tell a Sony engineer that he can't solve a problem. They just go to work and they come up with a unique solution. And we have a brand new LAV, uh, which is called an ECM90. And what's interesting about the 90 is that it's incredibly small. And the challenge with making LAV capsules even smaller, which has been an industry request for quite a long time, is that when you make the capsule small, the diaphragm also obviously has to get smaller. And when you make a diaphragm small, you lose frequency response and the inherent noise goes up. Well, Sony engineers didn't want to suffer those trade-offs. And um, those, you know, uh, those trade-offs really happened because people held to the idea of, of putting a round diaphragm in the tip of a round capsule. Well, Sony engineers said, who says you have to do it that way? Let's take a large rectangular diaphragm and lay it down the side of the capsule body. It's so large you can get a full 20 to 20K frequency response and very low noise. And while we're at it, let's take a second diaphragm and put it down the opposite side of the capsule. And you get a tremendous amount of diaphragm space, full 20 to 20K response again. But one of the side benefits of, of it is that we are able to really reduce the amount of cable rubbing noise dramatically. I'm wearing two body packs and I'm wearing two lobs. One is our ECM 77 that we've had out for years. But I've listened to this up against a lot of other competitive lobs on the market and they all have about this much cable noise. And it's, you know, something we fight against all the time. This is the ECM 90 by comparison. I won't say it gets rid of all the noise, but it gets rid of about 90 to 95% of that noise. And you can even touch the capsule uh, as long as you don't touch the actual slit, and, and that's very low noise there as well. So that's the ECM90. It's available in a Limo, uh, Limo style connector as well as in a traditional Sony 4 pin SMC9 connector. So let me uh, jump quickly into uh, another important line. Uh, lineup for us of wireless, which is called the UWPD series. We just introduced what is now the fourth generation in this series, which is also about 12 or 13 years old. But UWPD, UWP stands for UHF wireless package, and the D stands for digital signal processing, because wireless like this uses a companding scheme. And companding schemes can actually hurt audio a little bit. You've got to compress the signal at the transmitter and then re-expand it at the receiver. And um, if you don't do a perfect mirror image of what you compressed and what you expanded, you can get artifacts. So we decided, let's take that out of the, 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 pro, the problem away uh, because that circuitry is all based on little components and their various tolerances. And let's instead do it with math. Let's uh, put algorithms in these things that do perfect mathematical mirror images. In order to do that, you have to get into the digital domain in both of these things. So there's an A to D at the front and a D to A at the back, an A to D at the front and a D to A at the back. And while it's inside DSP, we can apply the algorithms and get rid of, uh, you know, or get, get rid of those artifacts of compression. We hold on to an awful lot of the transient response that is normally there in the real audio to begin with. That's important. Now, another thing is that even in this small uh, receiver, single channel receiver, it's true double tuner diversity. And we've got two complete tuner sections in here. That's also nice. And they have really long range, 72 megahertz of bandwidth. You can get down to 25 kilohertz, um, you know, like uh, uh, spacing, but, you know, and uh, tuning resolution. That's also important. But a thing that we did that's really unique here is that people get, conf you know, a little nervous about scanning sometimes. So in order to scan, you don't even have to go into menus anymore. You just hit the top panel button that basically power this guy on here. And let me power on the transmitter. And basically you hold the top panel button that says NFC sync. And in about three seconds, it'll go off to the races. It'll start scanning and it will flash black and white at you saying, I found the quietest frequency. Now, right below the display is a little NFC logo like we have on our cell phones and also one on the transmitter. You basically put the two side, side by side and the transmitter vibrates in your hand, letting you know that it's gotten the information and you're ready to go. 
And that's kind of cool. Now, the thing is that these receivers also have headphone jacks as well as, uh, you know, uh, audio outputs. And you can use these as personal monitoring devices. You can hang them on your belt. You can hook up your own pair of headphones and your hand reaches down to the plus and minus buttons and that becomes your volume control. But say you need, you know, for camera hops or for, you know, uh, personal monitoring device, you need a whole pile of these things on set. They all have to be set to the same frequency that the transmitter is on that may be hanging out of your cart or your bag. And basically, you tell the receiver, get your channel information from the transmitter. You pick up a receiver, you go, boom. You pick up another one, boom, another one, boom. And now all these receivers are very quickly set to the right frequency that the transmitter is on. The final thing I just wanted to mention is if you do have a Sony camera, these receivers can put on what's called an MI or multi-interface shoe. And when you attach it to the bottom of the receiver and you put it on a Sony camera that has the multi-interface shoe architecture in it, starting with our alpha cameras and going up to, but just stopping before shoulder cams that have slot-ins, but that includes A7R4s and FX9s and FS7s and FS5s and all of those cameras, you can take the audio and run it right down through the shoe, right into the camera, and you don't even need batteries in here because you can use the camera's battery power to come up and feed the receiver. So that's a very interesting thing. So without going into too much more detail, I will just say thanks everybody for spending the time and listening to me. Hopefully you found some of this information useful. If you'd like, you can certainly go to sony.com slash pro audio for more information, or you can send me an email at andy.munitz at sony.com and uh, I can answer any questions you may have. Again, thanks for taking the time and everybody be safe and be well. Thanks. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Hey, by the way, thanks. I echo everybody's sentiment, sentiment that you guys are just great for putting this on. Just a wonderful event. Thanks so much. Yeah. <clears throat> Pricing is... Ah, my audio was down. I apologize. <laughs> oh, ooh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I apologize. My my audio was muted. Uh, I was just basically saying that uh, it's, it's nice to be here with our uh, industry friends and uh, be able to talk gear. So uh, you should be able to hear great, me now. Great, great, great. So, hey, by the way, before we get on to any questions, I just, you know... Um, and when I reviewed my tape, I, I forgot to mention a couple of things, if I could just throw in real quickly. Yeah, uh, the first thing is that um, UWPD, interestingly, is available in three blocks. Um, we have a 14 block, which is 72 megahertz wide, goes from 14 to 25, and then a 25 block, which goes uh, from 25 up to 36. But it's also available in 941 to 960. So I think that's kind of an important thing, as that's becoming more important these days for us. Um, another thing I wanted to just mention is that our plug-on transmitters both uh, have phantom power capability, which is something important to know, I think, as well. And um, uh, there was something else that I was, you know, um, wanted to mention that if you end up hanging our UWPD transmitter off the bag or something like that, uh, the people at Core SWX built me a little battery eliminator that just, you know, kind of slides on in, in place of the traditional little battery sled here that comes right off. And when that goes on, then you can power the transmitter off of, uh, you know, traditional power that you may have running your bag. And that's another thing, as well as the USB that it's capable of. And uh, the last thing I wanted to mention um, is I was hoping at NAB to get to play with your wonderful A10 rack. And yeah. I wanted to, you know, kind of load, uh, you know, four of these puppies in there and and uh, in a very small amount of real estate get eight, you know, true double tuner diversity digital receivers all in a single rack space. So I was looking forward to that. But anyway, so uh, that's all I wanted to say. What kind of questions do we have? I, guess? Uh, I think, uh, let's see, 
Great to just uh, some comments. People are looking forward to seeing the ECM 90. Uh, I saw some questions earlier about, you know, mounting it with its side ports, which are a little bit different. Um, side. Oh, yes. The, the lob, the ECM 90. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there there's various kinds of little uh, third party accessories that we're trying to encourage get brought to market that would, you know, encapsulate it, but leave the sides open. And uh, certainly the, the little slits do extend up a little bit. So, um, you know, it's better to have as much of it exposed as possible, but it's an Omni mic and you can twist it around and not really uh, matter a whole lot in which direction they're pointing, to be honest. And then what's so, the price of the ECM-90? Um, it's a, I'd say it's right in line with your premium lobs that are out there, certainly go online and, and, and have a look, see what it's, what it's shipping for. But it's, uh, I would say it's one of our more expensive lobs. We have a whole range, obviously, and we've had, you know, ECM 77 for years and things like that, but it's not crazy expensive lob. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us, Andy, and, uh, for participating in, uh, the sound summit here. Let's see if we can get out oh, to uh, all the participants that are still, uh, still with us here. Let's, Hop everybody back Thanks, everybody. into uh, the call here. We've still got uh, our folks here, and uh, you know, here we are at at the summit. And uh, I, th I think Helmet, your your microphone's muted. If you want to say something, Carl, you're open. Um, How's it going, Andy? Good to see you. Hey, good, nice seeing you. Thanks a lot once again, John. It worked out perfectly. Uh, yeah, a few Q misses here and there. You know, I am uh, not a technical <laughs> director. I really uh, appreciate again what all of our customers do with our gear, and uh, you know, well, you got me fooled, John. You might have a new career <laughs> opening up for you. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you want it. Sure. Uh, but thank you very much for uh, for participating, and uh, thank you to all our viewers who are on the call here. And uh, I'm, I'm hearing some other audio in the back. I'm hearing Fabrice. Uh, his microphone open. They're, they're still awake in uh, in Switzerland. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, this has been a really wonderful two days to get together and talk gear. And uh, thank you all very much. Well, thank you, John. It was great to see all of the different presentations and learn about. Thank you, John. Je peux pas yeah. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you, John. Yes. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thanks. And on that note, we will close the stream. So thank you all. See ya.